Welcome to episode 581 for April 14th, 2024, and I'm Gina Duran. And I'm Brendan Cassidy. Hey, thanks for joining us, everybody. This week's show is going to be quite the contrast to last week, (laughs) which was a (laughs) lot of fun talking Michael Bay and Bad Boys 2 and Transformers Dark of the Moon, (laughs) among (laughs) others, Ambulance. I, I feel like if we want to introduce new listeners to this show, it's going to be these two episodes, right? Because it showcases both <laughs> ends of the spectrum. This is who we are. On one hand, we will talk about and rave about one Michael Bay. Yes. Faults and all. We are Bay defenders. We are we're, mostly. We're Bay defenders. Bay. And look, yes. Does Bay's films feel problematic at times absolutely they are there's no doubt do- there's no defending <laughs> Juliet laws just none whatsoever right oh like you just gosh have to accept Michael Bay the good and the bad and if, we talked about that at length we did, last week if we were to do probably the most or the top five most face palming cinematic moments of all time that is up there Right. That's up there. <laughs> yes, it was a really fun conversation. I really enjoyed it yeah. a lot. And here we are this week talking about the movies, the filmography of 1A24. Indeed. Indeed. It's quite quite a different realm of movie <laughs> so, that we're getting into this week. So here's a question. Would you ever like to see Michael Bay direct an A24 production? Yes, I would. I'd be, I mean, I'd be I think curious be as to what that is, <laughs> how that because would I think it kind of already exists. Pain and gain, pain and gain. I think yeah. pain and gain. Yeah. If that film came out today, I could absolutely see a twenty four scooping that up. A hundred percent. Yeah, I can see that happening. I okay, okay, yeah. I you make a great point. You make a great point there, man. Mm-hmm. Like if Michael Bay ever decides to make that kind of movie again, and it's still wild to me because you look at everything that surrounds Pain and Gain. It's, Mm -hmm. of course, the early years of Armageddon and Bad Boys 2 and The Rock. Then you get Bayformers. And then in the middle of all of that, you get this, this striking satire on America followed up by a Benghazi movie and an ambulance movie. Like, it, it, Pain and Gain is still this weird outlier in his filmography. It's so... Yeah. But, but like, it, yeah, I, I want to see him go back to that. Let's see well, him let's, go back to that. Let's also not forget that at one point, Michael Bay had not one but two films in the Criterion Collection. Yes. <laughs> not, I mean, I think Pain and Gain should be one of them. And that will see that one makes the most sense. That Not necessarily the, the Rock or Armageddon. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love both of those movies. I Me do too. love them. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's not, it, 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 w- w- say what you will about Criterion and the films that they pick, but those two films are not necessarily ones that people would associate as yes. Criterion worthy. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. It still um, blows my mind, even to this day, that The Rock and Armageddon are Criterion films. It, yeah. Yeah, does joggle the mind a little bit. Hey, very fun movies. Very fun movies, though. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. do adore them. I like them a lot. Pain and Gain does seem like the one Criterion should scoop up if they... Yeah. If, if they have to take a Michael to. Bay film again, that yeah. one makes the most sense. I agree. And I, honestly, I think they should because it is really great. That is a genuinely awesome movie. Yeah. Yeah. Great satire. We talked about that last week. We did. However... Um, I, I guess that is to say, if Michael Bay ever decides to get back to making those kinds of movies, and given the state of Michael Bay now, and we talked about this weird, mm-hmm. uh, this weird pur- purgatory he is in now, he might not have a choice but to go back to those kind of movies. Something small budget, yeah, and it's character driven. We can't give you the money, Michael, to blow shit up anymore. 
because it just doesn't make us money. However, it does. Yeah. We will give you $20 million to go make this satire with Mark Wahlberg in the rock. <laughs> yeah. We'll do the, that. Okay? This machismo deconstructionist <laughs> satire. <laughs> it's <laughs> so weird. Like, like I honestly, I could see a world where that becomes a reality given the state of flux he's in now. And I'll take it. And, and if he does, maybe that's where a 24 scoops in. Perhaps I mean, that'll be, we, we know a 24 is looking to get a little bit into the blockbuster game. A that's little true. Bit. They want a little IP. Yeah. So, um, and, and not even just IP. I mean, we're going to be talking about civil war pretty soon. That was sort of like, that's, that's kind of meant to be a bit of a money maker for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're pushing it as a blockbuster in its own way. Uh, yeah. So it's not, out of the realm of possibility for for Michael Bay to make an A twenty four film if it is a little bit smaller scale in that way. Exactly. I, I'm okay. Now I'm curious. That was a I didn't I did not know that my question was going to go into <laughs> this type of but conversation and pivot this way. But here we are. Yeah. Absolutely. And right now I don't know how much Civil War was made for. I don't know the budget, but worldwide it's at twenty five million. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's had a worldwide release yet. From what I see here, I think it's just had the domestic release. Budget was around fifty million, according to okay. what I'm reading. So we have here. a little so, ways to go. We have and a little ways was, to go, but yeah. It, and I see here it was released in thirty eight hundred theaters, which is mm -hmm. a, a decent amount. Yeah, pretty good. So it has some ground to make. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. If Civil War was directed by Michael Bay, maybe it would already be at fifty million. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Is that That's your way of saying Michael Bay should have directed it and not Alex Garland? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll talk about that here in the next day or so. We'll have a review yeah. for Civil War coming soon. So you can be on the lookout for that. On this week's yeah. show, we are going to be talking about A24. We're specifically going to be doing a draft. We're doing a draft again. I a love A24 it. A24 draft. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we've done uh, quite a few of these over the last few months. It, mm -hmm. it feels like. Uh, so I'm yeah. really excited to get into that. However, before we do, let's talk a little CinemaCon, which happened last oh, week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, and the, it revealed quite a few things to us. Now, I don't want to get into everything, you know, such as Kevin Feige using uh, the F-bomb. I don't oh, know if we yeah. need to get into that. Yeah, Boy, that's that's people had some is. fun. Making fun of <laughs> Feige over all of that, the the popcorn buckets that Deadpool and Wolverine is going to give us will so so, so is popcorn going to be the reason that movies succeed nowadays because Maybe. of popcorn buckets? It's Dune, like Deadpool, Dune. Wolverine. Mm. But see, yeah. what did we talk about? You can't replicate it. Dune no, no. released that bucket, and everyone's mind went straight to the gutter. It was not intended for that kind of viral marketing. But yeah. Deadpool and Wolverine, they are trying to replicate it yeah. intentionally. And it's just not going to catch the same fire. It's not. not. No. It's not. Now, depending on the execution, it could still turn out some fun memes and discourse. Sure. And jokes, yeah, but, but it's it, but it's it's you know, it's got to be the people that sort of form it, right? We talked about what made Barbenheimer so mm -hmm. successful is that it was a marketing Organic. campaign that the people yeah. created. It exactly. wasn't it, was it wasn't an organization. Organic. It wasn't a marketing agency, it wasn't a studio, it wasn't a production company. Yeah. We we made it, right? And that's exactly. that, that participation is what made it work. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh at any rate, we're not really here to talk about that. Maybe we can set Marvel aside for another time. There mm -hmm. are two items that I wanted to bring up here. One of them, okay. my boy, Damien Chazelle, who we've all talked about being in director's jail. It turns out being <laughs> in jail can inspire you. <laughs> hey, it turns out <laughs> being in jail can have its advantages. <laughs> he's been tapped by Paramount to write and direct a new film. And you guessed it set in prison <laughs> so <laughs> look the band's there i'm inspired let's make this happen paramount and that is too funny 
That's hilarious. I am wondering if music or film itself, or if they're going to be like characters yeah. in this, like there usually are in some of his films, or if this will be some separate thing. But yeah. the fact that he is making a prison film after jokingly being in director's yeah. jail is the funniest coincidence I think I of the year thus far. So yeah, I'm glad this is happening. I don't care if the movie is good or not. I'm just, I just love this little fact. I love this yeah. little fact. That's all I need. Yeah. It's really fantastic. I think my favorite yeah. meme and joke to come out of it was someone who started the tweet by saying, you know, Paramount approaching Damon Chazelle and being yeah. like, look, you're in director's jail. We're going to get you out. Right. You know, you're going to direct our next movie. Yeah. <laughs> and then underneath <laughs> that is the video from the ending of Fan Four Stick where. <laughs> He says, wait, say that again? <laughs> it's so good. Like, yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. We're going to set it in jail, in director's jail specifically. It, it's a director's prison is, it is. what we're getting at. So yeah, yeah. that's going to be great. That'd be a funny, I, 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 that'd be a funny concept, a movie about directors in jail because they're waiting to make their next movie. <laughs> I mean, there's a comedy waiting to be written there, I think. It really is. That's, that's In a... the style of Babylon, perhaps. So. Oh, I would see that. That's a heck of a concept yeah. for a Babylon execution. Like Damien, if you need some assistance, I don't know if you've written it yet, but we're available. Hit us up. We're inter we're interested. We'll we would, we'll walk we through. Love it. To, this idea to is totally up for grabs. Yeah, we'd love to partake in that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, I had to bring that up because that was really funny. Some yeah. some really great conversation born out of yeah. that news earlier in the week. Yeah, it's funny. One, yeah, though, with with with, cin with CinemaCon happening, there's so many things we could talk about. We latch on to that one. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I love that, that. Was by far my favorite piece of news to come out of yeah. CinemaCon. And there, there's a lot to be excited for, and yet that's yeah. the one we latch on to. I think it's that, great for me. That's the one. It's Damien Chazelle, who I don't know if he was ever truly in director's jail. I mm -hmm. think by some accounts he probably was to some degree, but I'm glad that Paramount yeah. sees the value in Damien Chazelle. Mm -hmm. I just hope that whatever the film is, it's not direct to Paramount Plus or whatever their streaming service is. Yeah. That's yeah. my only reservation there. But look, I, I will take it. I'm glad we're getting something, even if it's a streamer that Same. has the exclusive rights to it. But I hope Paramount puts it in theaters, whatever it is. Me too. We'll see. Me too. I love Damien. Me too. Don't don't let the history of Babylon you know scare you. It's like yeah. Like let's let's take a risk here. I agree. Um, I will say, we need to get to something else here quickly. I I I know that I mentioned we're not going to talk about Marvel. I do. I am still very excited for Deadpool and Wolverine. I just want to be clear sure. on that. I'm sure. excited yeah. for it. What was talked about out of CinemaCon sounds exciting. Yeah. Um, but. I want to save that for another time because yeah. we have a lot to get to with A24. The one thing we absolutely have to hit on, though, is this Joker trailer. <laughs> uh, because, look, <laughs> before I set mute to everything, we might as well at least give our thoughts on the Joker trailer so that way we don't have to speak and, to it again just until the film comes And end our out. mentions completely. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, obviously, it got a lot of attention last week a lot of people talking about it so brendan the fish <laughs> where do you stand <laughs> on this joker trailer it's fine it's fine it's it's not but, but worth... brendan you see um he likes the umbrellas of shaborg doesn't that get you excited mm, i guess <laughs> i don't know it's a okay. it's a reference to a better movie, but I yeah. mean it, it's it does it make me at least a little bit happy that Todd Phillips at least appreciates older older cinema? Sure. Yeah. Um I'm just curious how it's utilized in the film if it even means anything or if it's just an yeah. homage to something else. Um I think but like I, I it, the trailer's fine. I, if anything that gets me most aggravated, it has nothing to do with the movie or what it's about or even at all connected to the divisiveness that the first film led to. My problem is really the structure of the title once again. Uh, so how, how do you pronounce this? It's it's Joker Foley Adieu or something like yeah. that. Foley um, Adieu. But the way it's written with the whole title, it, to me it looks like 
foil jock a e do er. It's like like that's that's what it looks like to me. It's it's you like like let's just love titles and breaking them down like that. That that is forced, absolutely your forte. Yeah, yeah. scriforum. Yeah, it's, Scriff- I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's it's a hundred percent your thing. I, I, I should know. have I, known that you were going to bring you that. You should up. have known, JD. You should have known. The yeah. second that that title pops up in that way in the trailer, and it's also on the poster as well, uh, of mm. course I'm going to tear that apart. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, that's I mean that's a formality. It has nothing to do with the film. It doesn't you know change how I'm going to feel about the final product in and of itself. But I think the trailer is fine. I haven't gotten more or even less excited for the final film, whatever it's going to be. If yeah. anything is here that i will take away as a positive for me it's really just lady gaga uh and th- i think yeah. she seems really riveting uh, i i kind of like the interplay between her and joaquin phoenix from what we're seeing in the trailer here i will say the final shot of the trailer is pretty effective the mm-hmm. drawing of the, the 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 red smile on the prison glass and the movement of joaquin oh, phoenix boy. to match it that's people that's, lost their minds over that <laughs> that is <laughs> I, I will say this. I don't care whether the film is good or bad, but that's a pretty artfully done shot. Uh, and I'll at least mm-hmm. give Todd Phillips a little bit of credit there. So yeah. otherwise, I think it's kind of a shrug of a trailer, if I'm being honest. Uh, speaking of the title, I do think there's a missed opportunity here. There mm-hmm. were a lot of people to make this reference, so it is certainly not mine. But I do agree with the sentiment that the film really should have been called Ha ha land because there's a very blatant <laughs> la la land reference in this trailer. I so, like that. Oh man, I hope I, I wonder think who came ha up with ha that. land That's makes a lot of sense. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, I don't oh, know who wow. originated it. I, I saw it from several accounts, so I, I don't know who did it first, but mm. I think it's a great joke. Yeah, which of course he is the Joker, so. It feels appropriate. It does. That's something I he would say. I think you go Ha Ha Land. That, he, yeah. Now, now, do you just call it Ha Ha Land or do you call it Joker Ha Ha Land? I think you just go Ha Ha Land. Yeah. That, Absolutely. That, that's, pretty, that's pretty clever. I mean, because I like these two films, as a lot of people have denoted, and it's quite evident if you saw Joker, Todd Phillips is clearly riffing on a bunch of movies quite brazenly. Oh yeah. Why not also apply that to the title? Just own it. Just own Just it. Don't own even it. hide it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's not to. I mean, he's never hidden it before. But if he just if he makes it a, if he makes it part of the title, that actually adds to the joke. And I would I think it absolutely it adds to the ethos of the character for sure. Mm-hmm. Look, titling the first one Joker makes sense because yeah. it is an origin story after all. Sure. So this is the story of the Joker. I get it. Perfect sense. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. now he's already the Joker. You don't need to title it Joker 2 or Joker whatever. Ha Ha Land is a much better title. I agree. I agree. Well, and and this is a movie that's riff. This is a movie that's apparently riffing on the umbrellas of Cherbourg. And what film was Damien Chazelle's big influence when making La La Land? Clearly influenced by umbrellas. Yeah. And I don't think it's an accident by any stretch of the imagination that those are perhaps the two most prominent references that you see in this trailer. Yeah. It is dubbed a musical after all. Mm-hmm. We know that it's going to play out as some sort of musical. So look, yeah. it leaning into its musical influences in the same way that Joker did with Taxi Driver and Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, if that's yeah. who Todd Phillips is going own to be, it. that's fine. Just own yeah. it. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Just, just yeah. own it. Don't, don't try to hide from it. Don't try to play it up as some sort of subtle homage because that's not what it is. <laughs> well, then, it, it, by that logic, maybe the first film should have been called The King of Comedy. <laughs> the King of Comedy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, I was trying to the, see how I can change the title to make it Joker-like, but <laughs> The it, King of it's Comedy. It's The King of Comedy. Actually. That's what it is with a little taxi driver thrown in. Like, that's yeah, what that yeah. movie is. So with this, just call it again. That's why embracing Ha Ha Land just makes a lot of sense. It does. Just, yeah. If you're gonna be brazen about it, and look, the references in the trailer are not subtle at no, all. Not. They are not. It is not very not obvious. subtle. So just lean into it. Just have fun with it. I I think that's where 
they should go. Well, thanks as, for that. As, as, a, as a trailer, I think it is perfectly fine. Honestly, I'll be, I I think it was a little better than I was anticipating. Okay. I do think it's intriguing. It's not necessarily surprising. Don't get me wrong. Don't confuse or conflate the two. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised by what I see here. They had talked about how this is going to be a musical. Yeah. So it, 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 using musicals as its visual references, Mm -hmm. absolutely no surprise there. It leans into it in the same ways that we saw with the first Joker. It has brazen references to its own movie, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the first it Joker itself. It uh, and yeah, Lady Gaga looks like she's having the time of her life, which yeah. I think is really great. And sure. Joaquin Phoenix, who I love, is doing Joaquin Phoenix things. And you know, for better or worse, I don't know how you all feel ab- about his performance in that first Joker, but... Mm-hmm. I'm going to be really curious how this plays out. I will say this though, because I couldn't quite recall the conversation, not the uh, the level of details. The the broad right. sense is there, but I was curious what the details were in our review of Joker when we talked about it here on the podcast. I went back mm-hmm. and listened to that whole conversation, the yeah. whole thing. And it it's a really fun listen. I enjoyed it. If people want to go and check it out, hopefully mm-hmm. you get something out of it, whether you love the film or hate it. I will say, though, and I'm going to be really curious where this film goes, Brendan, because we got into some conversation uh, of that first Joker. Like, my interpretation of it was certainly different than yours in some mm-hmm. areas. Yeah, And I'm curious how that tailors to this film because, and I don't know if you recall this at all, but Mm -hmm. I, I talked about how I think there's, there's a lot of evidence. There's a lot of clues in that first Joker that what you see on the surface is an illusion that it's not something that's happening tangibly. And I, at the time, I was like, I, a sequel to me does not make sense given mm-hmm. how this film plays out. So that, honestly, like I have a curiosity, if anything else, that this film somewhat taps into based off of that conversation we had a few years ago. What was that, 2019 when the film came out, I think. Right, right. So I still don't think a, tr- a, a sequel to that movie makes sense. I don't, but since we're here, yeah, I, I, there is a curiosity now, given my interpretation of it and and where it ends. W- w- how does this film, this film, I guess, kind well, of live yeah. up to? Well, that? what's what's the starting off point? What's the yep. pivot point for this particular sequel? Does it still maintain that ambiguity you might be trying to hold yeah. true to? Uh, maybe it doesn't really open up by answering that everything we saw in that first Joker was truthful, right? Uh, maybe it's still mm-hmm. able to hold on to what you're holding on to. Yeah. Uh, so it's possible. Like like this movie could open in, in a way where it doesn't even really have any evidence to suggest what led to the events of this particular movie. It mm-hmm. could still keep it pretty vague, uh, which then maybe yeah. that's its way of having its cake and eating it too, depending on what your Perhaps. viewpoint is on that first film. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to come out and say with like some type of like newsreel that Everything you saw in Joker Part One really happened. <laughs> yeah, anything like I that. don't. <laughs> I yeah. I don't think it's going to do that at all. Right. But I am curious if this film is going to try to maintain. I don't want to say ambiguity because yeah, there isn't really a lot about that first Joker that is subtle. However, right. and I don't want to get into it all here because it's quite a lengthy conversation right, and right. we had that in the review. I just urge people to go and check out that review. If you want to hear us talk about it in, in great detail at length. Right. However, I do think that while the film isn't subtle, it does teeter on that line of what's real and what isn't. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. the film offers 
again, some brazen evidence that what we see unfold is a facade. Yeah, yeah and, I think that's fair. And again, I don't, I don't think the film is subtle in it, which is what makes the conversation around that film, I think, <laughs> really weird to me. It's a little weird. A yeah, little... like like this is like the, if it's a facade, this is what people are getting so hot and bothered by. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, like it's, um, and 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 look, I, I also I'm not saying that I like that about the film because I don't know. No, if it's just an that interpretation. Works or doesn't? It's admittedly quite a derivative tactic. Mm-hmm. Um, I like I I don't think that it's expertly crafted or, or woven in that regard. I mm-hmm. think there's elements about the craft that I, I do appreciate about that film. I still think the score is sure. great on its own terms. Yeah. Hildor's score Phoenix is really good. Is, is yeah. really great. I don't know if he was deserving of an Oscar, but I, I loved his performance still. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There, there's certainly things I do. I do like about it, but sure. Sure. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, the discourse was a little weird to me. It still is a little weird to me. Well, that was my thing with the movie. And again, I don't want to get too off topic here, but seeing that movie, the one from 2019, my first thought was, this is what people are getting so up in arms about. Really? Yeah. This, yeah. like, I, 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 I yeah. see, I could see why given some of its topics on mental illness and how that can bother some mm-hmm. people. But For sure. I mean, it's, it's so like, it's so half-heartedly interested in those things that it, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like there are worse films to actually get upset about that tackle similar things. Uh, uh, so yeah. like that was, that was really my thought about, it. I didn't love the film by any means, but I certainly, you know, I was never offended by it. Yeah, I agree. I, I certainly didn't have the same kind of recoil that clearly a lot of people did. They, the, that the discourse started even before the film came out, didn't it? It did. I mean, yeah, and look, I can't help but be a little cynical about these things. I, I have felt the same way about Michael Bay forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although I do think to some of the conversation we had last week in terms of how in retrospect people are thinking about Michael Bay in a different light because oh, yeah. of yeah. the given CGI the context. soup that yeah, given, we given the context so of Hollywood, day, all that, yeah. That with Michael Bay, there's a little bit of, okay, maybe we were a little too hard <laughs> on him. It's like, okay, <laughs> he's actually making tangible as... products here. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. But forever, I felt like reviews for Michael Bay were written years in advance. Mm-hmm. There were there was absolutely no thought put into his movies, and it was uh, painfully predictable. Painfully mm-hmm. predictable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Years before his next movie would come out, you knew exactly what the critics were going to say. Or, or not, I don't want to just call out critics, but just th- the discourse in general. Right. You knew what it was going to be. And I feel a little bit about this sequel to Joker in that, like, y- you can gauge the heat in mm-hmm. the conversation. It's like, some people out there, not everybody, but some people have already written the review without seeing the film. You can tell it's it's very I'm sure evident and that, that that's why I keep saying that this trailer that we just got is just merely fine. It's like like that's yeah. all like, like this if this is what we're so hot and bothered by, I think people need new hobbies. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> I, I I I'm not I'm judging the trailer based on what it is, mm-hmm. and that's it. I'm going into the movie like I said somewhat curious based off of my interpretation of that first Joker. Sure. I'm not coming in cynical or wanting to hate it by any stretch of the imagination. Right. Yeah. Same here. And you know, it's based off the reaction to this though. It does seem as if some people are. And again, I understand oh, well, that I'm being overtly cynical here. Well, it's going to totally be, get it, but it's going to be fun when lady Gaga wins best actress. <laughs> I know. It's just like you read some comments and people have already made up their minds before seeing it. Like why they, they shouldn't even bother seeing it. Honestly, no, if you're, if you're going in wanting to hate it with an extreme bias, I mean, just don't like it doesn't, who cares if you see this or not then. Yeah. Like it just, at least like, at least I could speak for myself. I don't care what those people's viewpoints on the movie are. Like, now, if you yeah. if you if you go in intending to hate it and you come out thinking actually it wasn't that bad, then that's a conversation I'd be willing to listen to. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. And, and look, there was a little bit of that even with the trailer, which yeah. is what made some of the conversation interesting to me because I did see a fair amount of tweets, posts, claiming, hey, look, that's actually better than I thought it was going to be. Like, yeah. I'm, su I'm surprisingly intrigued now. Like, I yeah. did see a little bit of that open-mindedness. Yeah, which that at least was appreciated. refreshing. Yeah. I did appreciate that. Um, and look, not that you have to feel that way. That's not what I'm saying. If you no, but it, are it's cynical people who are, about the film, that's it's, fine. It's people but, who are willing to let their biases yeah. and their cynicism, uh, they're, they're willing to put that off to the side to just be a little bit more yeah. fair. Right. Mm -hmm. And and that doesn't happen as often as I think we would like mm -hmm. to see. And if that's going to happen more often here and people are willing to own up to that, then that's yeah, that's at least a step in the right human direction. Right? I, agree. I just it, it, if you're working as a critic, if you're just a cinephile, if you're just going to the movies. Mm -hmm. Lean into your bias as much as you want, I guess it'll yeah. be hard to have a conversation with that person, but. Mm -hmm. I'm at least willing to accept that a little bit more in that context. Yeah. Critics doing that. I I just, that's an unforgivable thing for me. I yeah. just, I, I can't take you seriously. I'm no, sorry, I'm with you. I'm with, like I'm, if you're going I'm in with, you. with bias and wanting to hate something as a critic, I think you should, that means do you don't know else. how to do your job. <laughs> I think you should do something else. Yes. Yeah. Um. And, and, and like, like I'm not, Saying yeah, yeah. that I just saw a few things. The majority of critics out there, the majority of any cinephile that responded to this, you know, might be open minded, interested, mm -hmm. curious to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because part of it was the, the general reaction, and you could just sense the, the cynicism. However, mm -hmm. the other big thing and you talked about it earlier was the reaction to that final shot because yeah, there was yeah. a viral viral tweet that went out and mm -hmm. forgive me i can't recall who the person was right. i do think he works in the industry though to some degree if i remember correctly okay but he was talking about how masterful that f shot is because the focus is going in and out and then mm -hmm. ends with Joaquin Phoenix on the smile and how right. it lines up with the glass. Yeah. And he was losing his mind over it. And mm -hmm. that gained a lot of attention. A lot yeah. of people echoed that sentiment. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is an incredible shot. Mm -hmm. However, being in the <laughs> film community, in the, the cinephile world, in, in the critic world, yeah. That was so deeply polarizing. <laughs> like, yeah. There were some people that rolled their eyes so hard, they left their brain. And but, but others that did appreciate it. And it's like, man, even on a simple shot, we can't agree on anything <laughs> with this see, trailer. Like, why is a movie like this provoking that type of intensity? I don't because, know. Like, because here, okay, Seriously, is, the sh know. is that shot innovative? Is it anything new? No. Is it well handled and well done? Yes. It's like like yeah. like, where, like why do both of these extremes have to combat each other? It's like mm -hmm. can't they be both simultaneously? We can at least celebrate, yeah. but also acknowledge. Okay, like it's not reinventing any cinematic wheel. Yeah, but it doesn't like why does why does a Joker film need to be the film that carries that type of conversation? Is it because yeah. Todd Phillips is constantly referencing other films that are clearly better? Uh, does that make this film more susceptible and more damaging to the cinematic community because yeah. of what it's referencing? So it's more targetable. I, 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 but that's not a fair thing. So many other uh, than Quentin Tarantino, we should be knocking more often. So it's, it's, it's so yeah. like, wh yeah. where do you separate the people from this? I, I agree because it's not as if Tarantino is doing a lot of things. That's wholly inventive. Like right. he thrives off of, regurgitating something that he loves like that's he's his whole ethos is built on that he, he, he he's the greatest homageist <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly and a lot of filmmakers do something of that ilk so where mm -hmm. do you draw the line and that's yeah. where again my cynicism comes to the forefront because is it because i hated that movie is it because i don't yeah. like todd phillips is that the reason i'm you know, willing to hypocrisize myself 
Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Honestly, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I don't know. It does make for an interesting conversation because I agree. I don't think it's, um, the, it, it's not a completely innovative tactic. What happens? But I I will say, and it also circles back to conversation we've had here on the show so many times when we're talking about the state of Hollywood as it is now, especially Mm -hmm. from the studios. Yeah. And the CGI soup that we get so often. And and not even just from the studios, but you look at the streamers and how visually bland a lot of these movies, TV shows tend to be. They're darkly lit. It's hard to see. Mm-hmm. Like where does where does Todd Phillips fall in that? Like where does Joker and Ha Ha Land? That's what I'm gonna call it. Where do <laughs> these <that> films <laughs> fall on that spectrum? Because yeah, they're not innovative per se, but at the same time, it's not the CGI soup you get with studios. They feel like Warner movies, Brothers right? Especially. They actually they actually feel like movies as opposed yeah, there's, to there is content. craft there. Yeah. Even if it's thieving to a degree, you could say, yeah. or overtly homaging, if we're going to be nice about it. And maybe a little thematically superficial. Like, For that's, sure. It's fine. And that's but... perfectly fine. But at least it doesn't look like CGI soup. At least it doesn't look mm-hmm. like the gray man on Netflix, like oh like those kinds of movies. Like yeah. it, it doesn't, it, it's not the, the visually bland experience of that. Mm-hmm. We get so often, so like, yeah, yeah, good point. Where does he fall on that? Like, are do we? And maybe that's a false praise, though, because we're praising yeah. it because of it's everything else is so bad that this I know looks because good because what happens in ten? What happens fair? in ten? What happens in ten or fifteen years if things go the opposite direction and all of a sudden we find ourselves in a place where movies are actually always looking great? Now? Yeah. That CGI yeah, soup is gone. So then, then it's okay to then knock a movie like Joker because it it yeah. already blends in. Yeah, I agree. Because yeah, and look, we're gonna get into a twenty four, and I think some of these films are are obviously a really great comp in this circumstance mm-hmm. because if we're comparing Joker to some of those movies, or we're gonna compare them to Wong Kar Wai, sure, lesser mm-hmm. movies visually. I agree. Sure. I agree. But yeah. Joker and Ha Ha Land comparatively to a lot of the bland stuff we get. Well, from the other superhero days. movies. I mean, spe- yeah, specifically like, superhero movies. And it takes place in the DC world. So I think it's yeah. okay to make that comparison. Like, yeah, like I I would take that visually over a lot of the stark and dull and insipid movies we get from the studios that just look in, like total garbage in times like these i would absolutely take a martin scorsese ripoff over a gray man i absolutely <laughs> i would I agree i would would i, I say would i say that in the year t- like 2003 for instance where we're, when we were getting movies like pirates of the caribbean no yeah. i might not say that uh will i say that in 10 or 15 years from now if things yeah. change for the better no i might not say that but yeah. in the past, like ten years, in the in the in the scheme in the scheme of Hollywood now, yes, I would say that. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely. No, I agree. You know, I think that's what makes something like Mad Max stand out. Yeah. You know, or, yeah. or even some of the Mission Impossible's, like, you know, like the or the Top Gun Mavericks. Like those movies stand out because visually they are doing something interesting. It's not uh-huh. the CGI soup. Yeah. That the studios are reliant on. It's not cheap. The Joker movies, you know, love them or hate them. You can hate the movie. Maybe Uh it is superficial. Maybe it doesn't handle mental illness all that well. That's perfectly fine. I understand those criticisms. Same. But you can't tell me that it's visually dull in the same way the gray man is. It's just not. It's not. It's not. not. And this shot, like the final shot of this trailer, at the very least, it is indicative of, of a it's, man, yeah. of a crew, of a team that is trying, even yeah. if it's mimicking, it might mm-hmm. be regurgitating, but at least they're trying something. Exactly. And, yeah. and not, you know, being lazy about it. It, it must have For taken a few takes worth. to get that right. Yeah, like, yeah. like that, 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 that took time. That yeah. took time. That I'm was, sure they didn't get it on the first try. <laughs> no, that was clearly very methodically storyboarded and staged and timed. Like that, that, that took effort. Yeah. Whereas I the agree. gray man did not take effort. 
No, <laughs> none, <laughs> zero whatsoever. I I like I to see effort on screen, and I that agree. shot at the end of this trailer had effort. That that's 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 what that's what I liked about it. All right, let's talk about coffee. Oh, it's so you needed. Need it. So you good. love it. So delicious. It's so great. It's the yeah. lifeblood that we all need in our lives. Yeah. And if you're going to drink coffee, you might as well drink great coffee. You don't want yeah. bad coffee. No, you don't need you... bad coffee in your life. And that's what a lot of coffee companies, cafes will do. They have cheap coffee because they don't want to, you know, have expensive coffee where they then have to upcharge you. And Which next is, thing you know, you're paying yep. for a $15 coffee. Well, then you're paying for the additive ingredients that they add to it to mask that all of those too. imperfections, that's, which that's basically turns into caffeinated milk by that point, it, right? Exactly. You don't need a ton of milk and sugar in great coffee. Mm -mm. Um, a little milk here and there, maybe not a bad thing, but you don't need no, a ton but not, of Not necessarily stuff. for flavor, maybe for texture than anything else. Because yeah. I, like, from a taste standpoint, if I, I want to drink my coffee black. Yeah. And, uh, well, and, exactly. And, yeah, and, that, and that, that's what it should be. A lot of the time, what milk does is it eliminates the bitter qualities in mm -hmm. a coffee. That's why people yeah. put milk in it, because yeah. your coffee is too bitter or yeah. maybe too acidic. And yeah. those are signs of average to bad coffee. Bad coffee, yeah. yeah. Not good coffee. Yeah. So that's why we love coffee call, because they source specialty grade coffee. Well, what does that mean? Well, you're talking about coffee that has incredible qualities in it that yeah. Yeah. has fantastic notes that gives the coffee texture that gives it these notes of fruit, citrus, mm -hmm. uh, brown sugar or yeah. chocolate, uh, whatever flavor you want in a coffee, you have that. You can do something like the Sumatra coffee, which I know Brennan is a big fan of. I love that. I also love the the, the bourbon blend that you the told me about too. We great. have with four roses. It's really cool. But these are two coffees. I can only drink it black. I love it this yeah, way, and that's, that's the way it's intended. Yeah. Uh, and what's what's great about the Sumatra coffee is that it has these really palpable notes of like chocolate and brown sugar. It's mm -hmm. it's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite coffees is the Ethiopian Harar, mm -hmm. and that it's like I talked about it like it's like, like drinking a blueberry muffin. Like you, you can really <laughs> taste the blueberries in a strong way or strawberry. Sure. Like, it, like those fruity notes are just incredible. It's so, mm -hmm. so good. And to sure. add in even milk, it really eliminates those natural flavors. And those are natural organic flavors yeah. to the coffee. That it's what you don't want to fantastic. dilute from this coffee. You don't want to dilute that. So that's what yeah. we're talking about. Uh, this is a high end gourmet specialty coffee. Uh, mm -hmm. That's fantastic, and Coffee Cult is is one of the best at sourcing that and yep. roasting it. They have very specific roasting profiles to really extract the best qualities and flavors of those coffees. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to try it. Have to try yes. it. So go to coffeecult.com. Yeah. That's coffee with a K, cult with a K. Coffeecult.com, and use our code at checkout. I S F. Again, mm -hmm. that code is I S F. Use that at checkout, and you'll get fifteen percent off your order. You got to go check it out. That's coffeecult.com, and we thank them for their support. All right, let's talk about merchandise. Let's talk about T-shirts. Let's talk about toys. Let's talk about toys. Talk about toys. So one of the best ways to support us is checking out our store, uh, which mm -hmm. you can do at insessionfilm.com slash store, or you mm -hmm. can go straight through TeePublic, which is who we use, and that's tpublic.com slash stores slash insessionfilm. Um, and we have a lot of great stuff up there. There's, of yeah. course, shirts with our logos on it. Uh, we have Women in Session up there as well. Soon I'm, mm -hmm. I need to get Chasing the Gold up there. Uh, yeah. We have two yeah. new hosts taking over that yeah. show as well. Yeah, yeah. we got to um, plug them more often. We got we to gotta merchandise them. We got to bankroll them. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And look, yeah. not only do we have our normal logos, but we have uh, Star Wars-inspired um logos yeah. up there as well recently we have dune inspired dune. as barbie well. is up there as well barbie yeah, we're, is we're up playing, there as well playing into many commercial strengths we love it exactly or if you're familiar with the show there's a couple of unique 
shirts that we have available, such as Which our are admittedly my special favorite. one. Yeah. Um, I'll always worry about you. That's the deal. That's a great yep. one. Uh, yep. The best thing that ever happened at La La Land is that it lost Best Picture to Moonlight. You can see Another that great one, one there. Yeah. And recently we have one based off the Oscars, Stop Turning Art into Sports. And there's yep. a couple of varieties for that one there as With well. With a so. great reference to network in there as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so all of that is available. Plus, I'm still waiting to hear for people on this new design that I'm uh -huh. working on. Uh, yeah. I'm actually wearing it right now for those watching on YouTube. Yeah, yeah give, give it a stand up. Let's see. So there, there it is. The great Amy Adams. The great Amy Adams. The movie she should have won an Oscar for. Should have won. So for those listening, again, it's it's got the the black circle from Arrival, uh, yeah. The like the alien language black yeah. circle that you see in that movie, with Amy Adams in the middle, and then it has uh, the quote from the movie, despite knowing the journey and where it leads. You know, I embrace it. So nice, nice job reading that upside down. Spur of the moment. Yeah, yeah good work there. Enough. Thank you. I didn't really get the whole thing, but you get the gist of it. You get the gist of it. If you've seen Arrival, you know the moment. That you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I I haven't put it up there yet because I I, I want to know what people think and mm -hmm. and you know if if I need to make some adjustments to it. So, but I might put it up there because I, I do I do like it. Mm -hmm. um, I just wonder if we need to tweak it a little bit. And yeah. honestly, that could go for any of the shirts we have. We can always tweak it and re-upload oh, them. No feedback. So, yeah, seriously. You know, any feedback would be great. So, I mean, These are for uh, you guys out there. So, so yeah. we want to know that you're buying something that you want. Yeah. I mean, and, and this goes for even if you think they're dumb. Like if you think the designs are bad <laughs> and you want us to redo them, that's also fine. Like I just want to yeah. get, I want to have t-shirts up there that people are interested in. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about offending my feelings. <laughs> like it's okay. <laughs> like you can offend my feelings. It's so like just tell me if you like them or not. That's it's that's it's only when I say I don't like them that Judy gets offended. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time. Yeah. Um. You know. So because like there's the ideas and then there's the execution. Like I love the idea for this arrival one. Um. Uh, could it be better in execution? Maybe. And that's you know yeah. kind of why I want to hear from people. Yeah. For sure. Uh, at any rate. That's a long way to say. Please go to our store. It really helps yes. out the show. We have a, a ton of T-shirts. And you can also get these designs and things other than T-shirts. There's like yeah. phone cases. There's um, wall art. There's all kinds of stuff up on Public. There's, yep. uh, of course, mugs that you can get. So Yep, absolutely. All of that is available. Uh, again, insessionfilm.com slash store or straight at tpublic, uh, uh, tpublic.com slash stores slash insessionfilm. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for your support. With that said, let's go ahead and move on to A24. All right. Talking a little fun. A24 on this show. Uh, so the studio has been around for 11 years now, I believe. Their first release yeah. was in 2013. Mm -hmm. So we're just off the heels of them celebrating their 10th anniversary, which is quite wild. Yeah, Spring how interesting breakers. that it's sort of, it's sort of timed with the birth and session film as well, right? It really is, yeah. Because yeah. I've talked about here on the show that Spring Breakers was one of the first films we reviewed. It was yeah. very early on in our tenure, and that was one of their first movies. I believe that was the third movie they released mm -hmm. in 2013, or the second maybe even. So, <laughs> and arguably, <laughs> we'll see if it comes up in the conversation, but it's arguably still yeah. one of their very best movies. Yeah, I, I would love agree. it at the very I would agree. least. Yeah, that was in both so, our uh, top tens of that year, I think. Yes. So they've yeah. been around for a while and not just as a distribution company. Mm. Obviously, they went to producing films as well, mm -hmm. which I always find hilarious because the very first movie they produced ended up winning best picture that to me yeah. is incredible yeah. yeah that's so good hey you know we've been doing pretty fine at this whole distribution thing what if we made our own movie okay yeah. who should we hire this guy named barry jenkins we like him yeah let's let's do a movie called moonlight okay oh yeah that went on to be nominated what for eight different oscars and then one best picture unbelievable yep. that was the first one 
That's amazing. Un- that is amazing. Yeah. So there's yeah. there's a lot to celebrate with A24. There really yeah. is. They certainly have a style, uh, which I know has been subject to some criticism, especially around, let's say, their horror films. Um, but as far as their films are concerned and what they were trying to do business-wise, they don't always make money, but mm-hmm. they certainly make very good artistic calls. Uh, and, and and that that deserves to be celebrated, at least. I, I agree. I agree. So let's talk about them. Let's talk about A24. We're going to do a draft yeah. here, and we're going to do this similar similarly to how we've done them before. We'll do 10 yeah. rounds. Mm-hmm. It'll be a snake draft. Brendan and I will go back and forth. Yep. And it will be a little different than our own personal list because – Ultimately, we are trying to win you, the listener, yep. the viewer, yep. over. We yeah, want you point. to vote for our list. So sometimes that means going against our own list and trying to pick something that we think you will like, that you oh, yeah, will we, vote for. We might pick films that you and I don't really like all that much, J.D. And there, yeah. are, there are a few of their really popular films that I might be a little bit lesser on than the general public is concerned. Uh, exactly. But that, but that is, this is a marketing game. That's what this is. That's what this is. <laughs> That's what this is. And uh, so I'm very excited. Let's get into this. Me too. I think it's fair if you agree or if you don't, that's perfectly fine. We can flip the coin. But mm-hmm. since you've gone first the last two times. I was just going to bring this up. We, th- we've done what? How many drafts this year? Or at least throughout much yeah. of this new three or four <laughs> something like that and at least over half of them i've gone first right yes yeah you've at least gone first the last two maybe three times jd take so, it away i will go first yeah again 10 rounds we'll snake this around as yeah. we always do okay my first pick let's go with the best picture winner let's i knew go you were gonna do Moonlight. that one. you okay. already started talking about it so you might as well just you might, might as well, just well right I, I i won't i mean of Okay, let's say if I would have gone first, this would have been my first pick as well. I, I think yeah. you knew this was going. Anyone who's it's doing the an A twenty four draft, yeah. it's going to this is this is the number one seed. Absolutely. When I throw out the question on Twitter earlier today, what are your top five A twenty four movies? I didn't do a count. We got a ton of responses, but I would venture a guess to say Moonlight was the film that was mentioned the most often. Yeah. Um, I yeah. mean, it's simply one of their best movies. It won. Best picture for a reason. It's great. Um, arguably the best movie of its year. Beating Todd Phillips's favorite film, clearly, in La La Land. <laughs> yeah. He's maybe yeah. a little maybe that was his <laughs> Joker origin story. Oh, <laughs> Who wow. knows? what if they, what if they reenact that moment in Joker too? <laughs> maybe they will. Who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll make a musical number about it. Yeah. So Moonlight winning uh was was obviously very deserving. It's a great movie with three Mm -hmm. incredible performances that are distinctly singular, but also unify into um, a a singular experience. That's incredible. Then there's the, the production of it, uh, the music, the cinematography, you think about the baptism scene Mm -hmm. in the water, Mm -hmm. it's just an incredible movie. Absolutely love it. So moonlight is, is going to be the number one pick here. For sure. Yeah, well done. It's, it's the I think it's the only one you could pick here first if you're doing any any type of A24 draft, I think comes with a rule. The first pick has to be Moonlight. The first one's got to be Moonlight, yeah. Yeah. Now, as far as the second pick, okay, so now we're snaking to me, right? Yeah. Um, so this I, this is where it gets a little bit up in the air. Uh, and you know, I guess yeah. thankfully I will say while we, you and I specifically might not love these movies as much as some of the other ones or some of these other people that might, you know, take these ones in high regard. I think the first films we're going to talk about here are ones that we at least do love, Mm -hmm. uh, even if they are among the most popular. So Mm -hmm. thinking ahead here, I think my first pick is going to be the Safdie brothers is uncut gems. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, Yeah, that's a good one. Our editor in chief at incessionfilm.com, Dave Giannini will not like that pick. He will disagree. Well, he likes to think he has a lot of power, but I don't think he has enough power to turn <laughs> everything against me in this way. I think the people yeah. will respond positively. Uh, yes. So yeah, Uncut Gems, or maybe appropriately, 
uncut gems. <laughs> Julian <laughs> yeah. Fox would say it's a terrible impersonation. I'm so sorry. That may have been very offensive, but uh, this is a film I've seen at least three times because I apparently like to give myself a heart attack. Uh, but I do think it is a very, very good film. And I'm someone that hasn't always been on the Safdie brothers' wavelength. This was okay. the first time I really was. Uh, yeah. and, and I felt like there was not necessarily an empathy for its lead character, but a, a, an understanding and a, and a desire to see where he was going to go next. And a lot of that is sure. also due to Adam Sandler. He's, he's really effective here and just further proof that he is actually one of our more interesting actors working today. It, it, you know, certain comedic actors who are known for a particular brand of comedy that might be a bit immature, they usually have thematic and dramatic notes that most actors cannot replicate. Yeah. And, Adam Sandler's one of them. Like he's a he very is. versatile dude, and this is a really, really good performance that I wish got more love. So, so good. Uh, I know. Uncut gems, great stuff, great stuff. So that's my first pick here. No, no, that's a great pick. I do love it. It would have landed on my list somewhere, most likely, if mm -hmm. you didn't go with it. I'm not too surprised it goes this high. Um, equally, again, I didn't count it, but certainly saw plenty of love for uncut gems on Twitter earlier. So. Yeah. I do think you're going to get a bunch of support there, even if Dave has to roll his eyes at it. He he but can it try and block fun. it. He can try and block it. It's <laughs> not going to work. Yeah. I mean, people love that Adam Sandler performance. Really yeah. do love it. The intensity of that film. Although we did get one response earlier today that made me chuckle that I thought was really funny because he mm -hmm. was really angry that the gambling in that film was quote unquote, not real. It wasn't realistic. <laughs> <laughs> enough Brendan. turns out so i mean perfectly fair i guess i don't know if that film really is aiming for realism in terms of the gambling and maybe it's, the a Betsy's making, but it's a fantasy it's a fantasy it's a movie after all <laughs> you know at any rate a lot of people love it i love it that's yeah a pick. all right so snaking back to me so yes. number two pick for me yep. all right so i'm gonna have to make you really sad judy by picking a film i know you want to take um, Lady Bird. Yeah, no, that makes sense. You would yeah. have been dumb to not take that. Next. <laughs> yeah, you're probably secretly hoping. I wonder if he picks something else. Maybe I'll get Lady Bird and Moonlight. Man, I already won. Um, yeah, I know. Like, happen. no, you <laughs> absolutely have to take Lady Bird next. That's just and the way of it, the world. It's so top of mind with someone like Greta Gerwig, you know, being who she is now after Barbie. So you you have to have this movie represented early in some way. But the fact mm. that it's also one of A24's best films, and I think most people would agree with that it's it's kind of one of the better modern coming of age films in many ways yeah. uh with a with a great performance by Sir Ronan so uh, i don't have to talk about it much more than that i think it's really one of those pivotal childhood films uh, that that we're gonna i i think 20 or 30 years we'll look upon this film as we kind of do stand by me in our generation yeah. right i i yeah. think it will carry that reputation it's really quite great yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, for all the reasons everyone already knows it's a wonderful film that deserves to be taken very early now now i love it it's still my favorite film of that year mm -hmm. which was what 2017 yeah a great year some heavy hitters but Lady Bird stands above the rest for me it's an incredible debut i love the characters love the heart of that film and what it has to say about places and how we're moved by the places sometimes in surprising ways sometimes that keeps us in that place mm -hmm. how we react to it i do think about that all the time because yeah. i live quite far away from where i grew up and yeah every year inevitably i get homesick every single year no matter how many years i'm away from home yeah i still feel it to some degree or another so i do love how ladybird resonates in that regard and the performances of it. I just adore that film so much. So, Oh, yeah, and the way that, motherhood comes into it. Laurie Metcalf's performance. Oh my gosh. What a, yeah. what a performance. What a performance. It's so good. Yeah. The whole father and mother relationship, that whole dynamic is just really great. I still think about it's, that yeah. scene with the dad on the computer. Like, I just solitaire. So is, is this my favorite Tracy Letts performance? It might be. It's certainly, yeah, yeah, it's up it there for me. Be. It might yeah. be. I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to double check myself on that, but it might yeah. be. Yeah, it's, it's really great. And mm. as it stands now, as much as I love Moonlight and respect the hell out of it, Lady Bird is my personal favorite A24 film. Okay. Currently. 
it's, it's, so it's certainly up. It's certainly up there for me, probably top 10. So. Um, I think I prefer Uncut Gems personally, but I mean, we're talking about two of the best films from this studio. So it's, yeah. it's, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're really splitting hairs at this point. Yeah, 100%. Yep. Um, okay. So Uncut Gems and Lady Bird to kick off Brendan's list. So All as right. we circle back to me, I have two films here that I love. One of okay. them I think is a little surprising. I wouldn't have picked it this high if I had not sent out that tweet earlier. Oh, and I, I think have I know done this before. I've done this it, before yeah. on some of these previous lists where you get a reaction from people and you're like, oh, okay, that's perhaps in everyone's top five more than I anticipated. And yep. I love this film. So I'm not heartbroken about it <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, there are three films here that I had the same reaction to looking at the history of those quote tweets you're working with. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you're talking about one of these three. So let's see what happens. We'll see. So one of them that I'm going to go with as my pick here, my second selection is David Lowry's The Green Knight. That I did not expect. Yep. I like That's not one of the three I was thinking of. I saw this one. Maybe the most other than Moonlight and Lady Bird. Yeah. And again, people, I didn't people count really it. I'm just like this movie. Basing well, it off of what I went through. And we got a lot of them. I saw a lot of these tweets. So thank you to everyone that responded. It no, was really absolutely. great to go through it all. What's really gonna help you here is the topicality of Dev Patel right now. Yeah, Dev Patel, he's certainly yeah. hot as well. Yeah. And I still think people like people think about that movie, if nothing else other than Delph Patel's performance is the cinematography, which is out of bounds. Yeah, it is out of this world. Really so ridiculous the cinematography in that film, and uh, I, I th and I think it still registers with people, and mm -hmm. it's probably why it's so top of mind. But I also think it it is an incredible interpretation of that parable, and I mm -hmm. love how the film uh, goes into it. Uh, of, of course, within the craft and, and the performance that certainly comes through. But um, I do love the provocative questions that the film brings up and the contradictions of it. There's some fascinating contradictions in that film yeah. that offer up these dichotomies that I absolutely love. Yeah. Absolutely adore about that film. So, um, yeah, I, I just think it handles that material gracefully and assiduously so uh, i understand it i don't know if it would yeah. be my personal top five but it's certainly up there it's certainly mm -hmm. in that conversation for me uh because i i love it as well it was one of my favorite well, films of its year yeah uh, so this this if nothing else this is this is really more of a pick based off of the again the, the voice of the customer I saw on twitter yeah the voice of yeah. the customer i saw this <laughs> a lot yeah so yeah I hope that you all vote for it. <laughs> Please well, let's, vote let's, for it. Let, let's see if, uh, you know, actions speak louder than words here. And what I think is yeah. so great about The Green Knight, we just got done talking about Lady Bird as a coming-of-age film. The Green Knight kind of is as well. Uh, and, and I think yeah. as a coming-of-age film and a more fantastical lens, obviously, it is a really interesting movie. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that's where the movie is at its most successful dramatically, at least it was for me. And Dev Patel's mm -hmm. performance is very strong and, you know, Ca ca uh, capturing that yeah yeah i, I completely agree so yeah. i i love that movie that is my next pick here okay all right a again this is where it gets tricky because there's quite quite a few great movies here to choose from mm -hmm. um okay for my next selection here i don't know if this is on your list or not either probably is it probably you know what, actually, is actually you know what i'm 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 going to i'm going to pivot slightly I'm okay pivot slightly because okay i i wonder the film that i was about to choose right now i i just kind of wonder if i can get it in the next Later. round yeah and if so gosh i really hope so... i take it by accident now <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, because I'm going to go with another one that was highly talked about, and and I think part of it is it's really great, 
and mm. also it's top of mind because it's it's pretty new. It's it's one of the uh-huh. new films in their collective, Past Lives. Damn it. I'm gonna go Past Lives. That's what I was gonna go next. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't need to go into it. We've we all recently saw Past Lives. We know it's great. It yeah. was both in our our top 10s of the year. Uh love that film, love its story, the characters, you know. Yeah, I I don't need to speak to it anymore. We all know why it's great. So, uh, yeah, that's my next pick. We know why it's great. Yeah, we really do. Um but yeah, I was going to pick it next. How dare you? Um <laughs> How dare you? Uh Because well, it yeah, it'll be funny if you get a little bit of uh it, Revenge. If you're able to reciprocate that and steal and, the film that and, I want next. And steal something that you want next? Okay. Um, because, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun looking at what people were saying when you tweeted out, what are your top five A24 films? And there were yeah. a lot of commonalities and then a lot of common surprises that okay. I was like, oh, okay, I love that film. I know that's a well-liked film. Yeah, it's People still have this in their top five? Really? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go with the farewell. Oh, okay. That, that was is coming a little up a bit of a surprise. That was coming up a lot, at least from ones that I, w- I was seeing. Lulu Wong's film. I think that's kind of that's one of those a, movies. Okay. I yeah, did not so, anticipate that. That's fun. I love that. <laughs> I love that film. Yeah. So I'm going to go uh, this. Okay. I, I really hope I you know saw enough to suggest. Okay, a lot of people seem to like the farewell. I'm going to go with this one. Um, and. I, I think as one of A24, one of the A24 films that do a great job representing a different cultural landscape, because a lot mm-hmm. of them do that. Uh, and and this one, I think, does a great job really turning that into a character. Uh, so that's probably why it seems to have stuck with so many people for so long. And there's just a tender quality to it and a comedic quality to it that I think mm-hmm. is really kind of timeless. There's a timelessness to this one yeah. that... I think ha- I think has resonated with people for quite some time. So taking a swing here, maybe I took it a little bit too early, but I'm going to go with The Farewell as one of my okay. earlier picks. I love it. Good stuff. Yeah, that's a great movie with a, a great central performance that should have gotten more love in terms of and awards. I, and I, yeah, you know, I don't always love Aquafina, but I, I, I guess I don't love her when she's doing an Aquafina performance. But here yeah. it's it's something completely different, and I well, think she's really quite great in it. I think that's what's so interesting. It's a little bit of what we talked about with Adam Sandler, right? Where mm-hmm. you don't always see those kinds of performances, but when it's there, it's striking. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't know because I don't want to box in comedians and say, oh, they're so much better as dramatic actors if that's all they did. Well, <laughs> no, know? it's it, no, it's not say that. that it's... But there, there is something interesting not that it always registers it doesn't but there is really something interesting when comedic actors are able to take on these kind of hefty roles and really lean into it and Mm -hmm. in a way that is you know that that's so memorable you know adam sandler for sure but aquafina is is another great example here uh Mm -hmm. you know that that i really love you know, or you think about, uh, God, what is the name of that movie the, with Will Ferrell? Uh, Stranger Than Fiction. Stranger Than Fiction. Yeah. That's another one. Because when we did that retrospective, that film was in my top 10. It was. I, I yeah. loved it. Like, it was in my top 20. I think that I think film really was great. great. And his performance is also really striking. And you just don't see that side of Will Ferrell all that often, which is fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, his comedic work speaks for itself. Yeah. For better or worse. I know some people don't like him, but... If you like that mm. style of comedy from Will Ferrell, some iconic performances. Yeah. Uh, well, but, you know, you don't, so you don't see that sign of Will Ferrell all the time. And he's really great. So I don't, th- there is something well, really interesting. There, there, about, there's two things. Yeah. There's two things there because, on one hand, since you haven't seen that side of that actor, the element of surprise almost elevates the performance a little bit. But then it's, it's also because they're so particular with their type of performance that they are able to channel a different yeah. like dramatic scope that a normal dramatic actor might not be able to tap into. Mm-hmm. Like when I think of something like Stranger Than Fiction, I think that movie only works because a Will Ferrell type plays that character. 
I think Perhaps, if any yeah. other dramatic character played it, it would seem like, okay, it's just another effective performance. And I would kind of say the same thing about what Adam Sandler has been doing lately, or maybe in this case, what Aquafina is doing in The Farewell. Yeah, I, yeah. like Because they come from a completely different niche, like they, they channel something kind of unique, and I, I can't put it into words. It's almost inexplainable. But like it's it, it just they create something new. It's it, there's something innovative about their performances, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and that's what it's that's what's so fascinating. When it, it's mm-hmm. it's not just because they're tapping into something that we haven't seen before. It's because it's something we haven't even seen before, uh, and yeah. that's what makes it effective. I agree. No, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, great movie, great performance. Mm-hmm. Love that pick. That it's a little bit of a surprise. I honestly did not expect it. To maybe I think even be mentioned tonight, let alone be that high. But I mean, I love the pick I, though. I did see it a few times in a uh, few people quote okay. tweeting your your okay. your prompt. So yeah. uh, um, hopefully, I saw enough to justify me picking it this okay. early. I'm sure you um, did. <laughs> I'm sure you did. But I yeah. will say the film I'm going to pick next is one that I feel like is a bit more obvious to take early, and that is Alex Garland's Ex Machina. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we'll <laughs> we'll go with we'll go with this yeah. one now. This was. I think at the time it was my favorite film of 2015. It might still be the case. Uh, I think it, this is a heck of a debut film if you don't mm-hmm. count Dread, which many people would say Dread was actually Alex Garland's debut film. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of hard pressed to agree. Yeah, that I'm, movie. Yeah. According to Carl Urban, I'm, I, I, for some reason I would listen to Carl Urban. I just, if, <laughs> whenever he says something, I feel like I have to listen. I know, exactly, um, yeah. yeah. But I do think Ex Machina is a really interesting portrayal of I don't want to say AI because it has such a different connotation nowadays, mm-hmm. um, but robot intelligence. Yeah. Because uh, we see, we always see the side of like the human side, the, like, the positive human traits that make robots seem human, right? Whereas Ex Machina kind of takes the antagonistic approach that what makes uh, Ava kind of human is the fact that she kind of uses threat and fear for her own survival mm-hmm. uh, that's which is a, which is a human trait we don't love to latch on to but it is yeah. ultimately still a human trait uh, yeah. so I, I i think the film taking a bit of a yin yang kind of approach here is really interesting uh so and for many for many reasons visually tonally has one of the best dance sequences of the entire decade yeah. gotta uh, love it yeah. yeah so it's a it's a wonderful film i love this one um, look, I don't want to get ahead of myself because we're going to talk about Alex Garland's latest film here in just a little bit. Mm-hmm. I do want to know where the ex machina Garland went to. Where's that guy? Well, I haven't seen Civil War yet, so maybe I'll reply back and say, oh, he's still here. <laughs> he's, still, he's still there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it yet, um, but I will say, like, as time has gone on, I am slowly appreciating Annihilation a little bit more. I agree. I, no, I, I yeah. do love Annihilation. I didn't hate men like a lot of other people do, but I do agree that's quite a step down from Ex Machina mm-hmm. and Annihilation. And, you know, and I, I'm with you. Ex Machina is one of the very best films of not just 2015, but probably the 2010s. It's great. It's certainly super, one of the best. Great. Probably one of the top 10 best sci fi films of the past decade. For sure. I mean, it's yeah. incredibly intelligent. I love the stimulating dialogue, the way it examines AI tropes for all the reasons you talked about. It's mm-hmm. really quite fantastic. It's surprisingly very funny. I think that's what oh, I yeah. love so much yeah. about Oscar Isaac in that film for all of the intelligence that you get with that character. He does have this sarcasm. Yeah, that really comes through. That's quite biting in the character. Uh, mm-hmm. It's really funny, and it's a nice contrast to Domino Gleason in that film. They just have such a great rapport and dynamic that absolutely makes the discussion so fascinating. And mm-hmm. to see how it all plays out is really quite gripping. I, I just, yeah, I love it. Alicia Vikander, um, her best performance still, maybe. It's up there. Oh yeah, she did. She won an Oscar, not for this role. Yeah, <laughs> was it? For, it was for another film this year, wasn't it? The same year. Yeah, it was the Danish, uh, the Danish girl? girl. Yeah, yeah, that came out the same year, of course. Yeah, but I pretend it's for Ex Machina, as we all do. I'm sure. <laughs> I for for a moment I actually did forget because Ex Machina is an Oscar winner, but it's for visual effects. For visual effects, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, no, she's so good in that role. Absolutely terrific. Yeah, and she's terrific. Yeah, yeah it just I just love how the film gets into its ideas because broadly speaking, the whole idea of what makes us human is it, like it's easy to get derivative with that. I feel like these days mm -hmm. because so many films have tackled that over the years. But I, I feel like the film does such a yeah. great job of avoiding that triteness and really it, getting it into does. something well, new and refreshing. Yeah. Every robot intelligence movie is ultimately in some way about what makes us human, right? Yeah. That, that is the overarching ethos yeah. of them all. Yeah. But yeah. a movie like Ex Machina and even a film like, let's say, Spielberg's AI, they do great things by trying to find kind of like sub layers and some que sub questions underneath that overarching kind of mm -hmm. outline. Yeah. Uh, so like the, and and this film does a great job at that too. Yeah. I mean Blade Runner is so overtly about that. Like asking that question on its mm -hmm. surface. Yeah. Yet we don't criticize or talk about the film in simplicity because it's not well, it, it, simplicity, it's not some sim simple yeah, but in it, execution. Right? It's also so opaque that every time you watch that first Blade Runner, you find new layers that you discover yourself. Exactly. Uh, like, it, like it's a movie that's designed to reveal itself more and more. It's not, it, it's simple because it's not simple. Like it's, yeah. it's a re really interesting way of yeah. saying it. Yeah. And, and of course, you, you know, beyond that, it's the craft of it. The sound yeah. design of Ex Machina is, maybe underrated it's it's really fantastic mm -hmm. it's a visceral Agreed. setting like the it, that yeah. whole atmosphere like the layout of that house it's great just really great yeah love it love it at any rate i love that pick and that is one i also saw a lot of i i might not have seen the farewell as much as you certainly saw a lot of ex machina mm -hmm. all right so that is one of the films i wanted to go with next but I do have two here that I'm ready to go with. Okay. And I guess it doesn't matter the order here, but it doesn't. I, I mean, if you if you have two in particular, <laughs> you're gonna get both of them. We're gonna get both of them. Uh, I, I guess first, let's go with First Reformed, Paul Schrader. Whoa. Okay. Yep. That's surprising. A little earlier than I expected, but I knew it would be in, in someone's ten. I mean, again, was gonna go. Uh, like I have two here. It could have gone fifth. You can pretend it's five. Uh, well, I <laughs> guess I guess when matters, I say but... later, I mean I would have expected maybe like nine or ten or something like that. No, I I have this really high on my list. Certainly much okay. higher than the farewell. Mm -hmm. I even had this higher than uncut gems, to be honest. Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah, I I saw this a lot. Saw this okay. a lot and wanted to make sure I had it high on my list. So. Um, yeah, First Reform, love this film. I mean, we've seen a lot of movies recently about religion, most most recently in the last few weeks mm -hmm. in the horror realm. And I guess this is a little bit of a horror film in some ways, especially given how it ends. Uh, oh, I think it absolutely is a horror film. I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> it doesn't get categorized that way more often. It probably should. But yeah, I mean, the way it evokes this bygone era of American Christianity with the church we see in that film and mm -hmm. how that is deconstructed as Ethan Hawke's character grapples yeah. with his faith and how that, how he starts to lose it, I guess yeah, yeah. is really great. Like that seesawing in that film is, is unbelievable. It, it's really great. And Ethan Hawke is, at his very best probably should have mm -hmm. been Oscar nominated or at least in the conversation more. Oh gosh. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's interesting to see, uh, you know, the trajectory of Paul Schrader here because first reform sort of started this unofficial trilogy of sorts, uh, between mm -hmm. the card counter and master gardener. And I think all three films have something interesting to offer, but, none of those other two ever matched the um the conviction and the consistency of first reformed uh, mm -hmm. th this was this felt like something paul schrader was always building towards for like 30 years yeah and, and it's as a director it's one of his best movies and if someone were to say it is his best movie as a director then i don't know if i would push back on that sentiment to be honest mm -hmm. it's it's really quite great stuff and really provocative stuff yeah i agree i, I love the questions it provokes and i love the surrealism of it, like it takes some really interesting turns aesthetically and mm -hmm. even dramatically near the end that are 
great. I love the swings. And honestly, I think they really work for that movie. I know they don't for everybody, but mm-hmm. man live, that film ends on a biting note that I think is incredible. Oh yeah. It's, I was on edge for much of that ending. And then the way it actually crystallizes in that final shot, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> did not yeah, expect it's that. It's certainly, it, it's, it's like the film is playing with tension in a horror movie like way. Only, only to pull the rug from under your feet in a way that you don't totally expect. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Schrader is clearly setting you up for something that you're not ready mm-hmm. for. I agree. I agree. Absolutely love that. So First Reformed, it, it's it's a film that's not personally in my top five or top ten, mm-hmm. but I yeah, do a lot love, of people it. love it. I, I really love it. It's one of my favorite films of its year, and I, I think this is going to sound insane, but it's because their films are so great. Like I have mm-hmm. this currently at 21 on my list. I and I know where I have it. And it sounds low. I know that sounds low, but the films, there's so many great films that a 24 has in their collective. And yeah, I just, the films above it. I think I just slightly love a little bit more like by a hair, including the farewell, which I have. Yeah. I think at 13, like I love okay. that movie. Yeah. Really so, good movie. Yeah. I don't know though. Like I, I, I'm really coming around on the Paul Schrader trilogy more, um, uh, as time goes on, I think, you know, I didn't love the card counter as much as everybody else. That's the one I'm still like, I, I'm not sure of. I but did. I do. Two, I really like, I do prefer master gardener over the card counter. I think the I card agree. counter is yeah. the weakest of the three. Even if I do think it still has some interesting things to say I, and showcase. Yeah. So like, I'm really coming around on, on those movies, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I feel like if I was to revisit first reformed and which is ultimately what I'm trying to say, if I was to watch that again tomorrow, mm-hmm. it's very possible that cracks like my top 10. <laughs> I also feel I also feel like if if you were to rewatch all three of those movies back to back, it'll make you appreciate them all in totality a bit more. For sure, yeah, yeah. They they are very tonally similar. Yeah, Uh, not even just thematically, but also tonally. It's it's almost like they are designed to be watched together. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so I love that. I saw that a lot. Really wanted to go with it. Mm-hmm. And, and really on my list, I guess I have that five. I kind of flip flopped them here. Not that it really matters all that much. Right, right. The next film I'm going to go with is in my personal top 10. I okay. Okay. deeply love this movie. And I saw this quite a bit as well. And it's funny because I've already brought up this filmmaker. I'm going with David Lowry's A Ghost Story. You're going with two David Lowry's? Come on. With both Lowry's. You know David Lowry's my guy. He's my guy. But I love him too. He's my dude. He's my dude. I love him as well. All right. And... You know, I, I'm going to go on a bit of a research binge here. Is Pete's Dragon an A24 film? Can I snag that? <laughs> yeah. If only, right? If <laughs> only. I mean, there are not many movies about death like this one. It is so distinctive aesthetically. Yeah. But I do I do love that vision. I, I love the uniqueness of it and the way it goes about dealing with grief and marriage and the ruthlessness of time, especially our uh, emotional attachment to places and things. All of that mm-hmm. is there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing that is perhaps most resonant to me and longtime listeners of our show will not uh, be surprised by this. And of course, Brendan, you know exactly where I'm going here. Well, of course, I just I know love how this. the film is this meditation on the importance of closure. I think ultimately that is that's your what that theme. Film is about. That's your favorite theme. That's one of my very favorite themes in movies, and this is quintessentially that. And then you couple it with David Lava's direction and the tonal precision of the film. And the aesthetic of it, mm-hmm. it just it has this deep aura of loneliness that seeps into every corner. And I just found the experience majestic and profound. And yeah, I love it. So yeah, a ghost story. I I would have I probably would have picked it regardless, even if it didn't get mm-hmm. a whole lot of recognition in our prompt earlier. But I I saw yeah. enough of it that I. 
I wanted to prioritize it. So, uh, and it's it's, it's a it's a favorite of mine. If I'm being honest, this is a top five A twenty four film for me. Maybe even top three. If I'm going to mm-hmm. go that far, I think I think it's one of the best films of the entire past decade, and it hurts me that I didn't take it sooner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now, uh, now, now. I don't care if I win or lose <laughs> this poll. I just want to pick a next pick here that's going to make you hurt. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's my ne- which I don't so, even know if I can do now. There's too many great ones out here that yeah. I think are st- we're, we're starting to get to a point where it's like where do you go from here, right? Um so you know, this is this is another film that I kind of saw quite a bit in my research through Twitter when you posted that prompt. And I think this is one that is a bit top of mind as well because this filmmaker has a pretty uh, highly anticipated movie coming out later this summer. Uh, so for my next pick, I'm going to go with Lee Isaac Chung's Minari. Okay. All right. Good pick. I like it. The Again, Minari one of the best train? films. What's that? You said going on the Minari train. I like I'm it. Going on the Minari train. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I, I just, I love how American this film feels. But it's ironic that it's not from the perspective of Americans, <laughs> or at mm-hmm. least like it's 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 a very different perspective on what it means to live an American life uh, from a perspective that might not be able to understand or relate to that. There's that cultural disconnect that is so it's so inviting. Like I, I just I want to spend time with this family and learn their ways while also teaching our ways simultaneously. Yeah. I, I and. and the, the the landscapes of it all the 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 like the midwestern landscapes of america i think are really uh, they're almost like a character here which is what makes me excited for what lee isaac chung is potentially going to do with twisters by capturing that same yeah. kind of rural landscape i think that makes perfect sense for this type of world and well, well that type of world and how it works so well in minari uh, and it, it, it just has a family drama almost as another coming of age tale like it, if there's a theme here. A24 does really good. They, they, they do really good coming of age tales. Uh, yeah. They, they're, they're really, they really have a good knack for that. And the, the perspectives of these two young children here as more or less the stars of the movie as the main conduit between America and where they're from is really intriguing. So mm-hmm. for all those reasons, I think it's a wonderful film and one of a 24s most uh, rewatchable if you ask me. So yeah. I think this is another one of those timeless films, kind of like The Farewell. I think it just has a timelessness to it that can always be enjoyed regardless of when you're watching it. Yeah, no, that's a really good film. I, I do really love it. I've only seen it the one time. I would love to give that another go at some point. Maybe I, I'll do that before we get to Twisters later on in the summer. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I love that film. It's relational dynamics, really endearing very well shot. Love the cinematography yeah. of that film too. Its use of symbolism is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good pick. A little surprising, honestly, but a good I pick. did see that one, unless I saw it from a small segment of people, but I did see it pretty often. And I think it is a very, very good film. Okay. Um, this, my next pick, I think is one that might be a little bit more popular. And when you talk about a 24, you got to get horror represented in here in some way. I, you know, I was wondering if we were going to pivot to horror at some point. <laughs> we, well, we kind of have to, but the thing the, he, here's the downside with that, because so many of their horror films have become kind of divisive that picking yeah. one of them could be a smart thing for a certain group of people, but then it could also damage your chances depending on what film yeah. you pick. Right. Uh, yeah, Sure. So I'm thinking if I'm going to pick horror to at least represent the horrific side of A24, what's both the safest and what I think is one of the better picks? I think it's The Witch. The Vivich. I knew the it. Vivich. I knew you were going yeah. to go Vivich. I need to go with The Vivich. Um, yeah. Is it Robert, Robert Eggers' best film still? I don't know. He's got... Yes. Yes. All three of his yes. films, actually, now that I think about it, I think I've graded all three of them a four and a half out of five on Letterboxd. Wow. <laughs> I mean, they're great. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah. So I guess, okay. I, I just have to say, I really don't like this ranking game that's going out there ranking Robert Eggers, Jordan Peele and Ari uh, Aster. Yeah. All that. I yeah. hate, I hate it. I really do. Um, because none of these filmmakers are alike at all. Uh, but I guess if I had yeah. to play that game, 
I get uh, Robert Eggers, I think has made the most consistent filmography thus yeah. far of the three. Yeah, uh, well, and that's the, and that's the thing because like Jordan Peele and Robert Eggers are two totally different filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely hate having to com compare, compare them in a situation like that. Yeah. Not that it's serious or anything of the sort, obviously, but I mean, yeah. in a conversation about those two, they're both great and they're both extremely consistent. I don't, I, I can say this confidently. I do prefer them over Ari Aster, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I can choose between Jordan Peele and Robert Eggers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can. And, and, you know, I, it, yeah. it, and to me, and I'm just saying this just for me, if, yeah. if you feel differently, if anyone out there has no problem ranking them and distinguishing them that's perfectly fine mm -hmm. but for me it just feels a little disingenuous i just i don't know they're just I mean, well, two it, totally different and they're both it, it, it gets in it gets into the superficial comparisons as opposed to the genuine comparisons because yeah. yes all three of these filmmakers dabble in modern horror mm -hmm. okay but so many other filmmakers do that yeah. like, like it's not just these three yeah. the only thing is that these three each have three films and they've yeah. all been pretty i don't want to say well received but they've all they've all developed reactions right yeah. they that, that to say the least yeah. uh but aside from that they none of their films feel or or they don't feel alike at all it's it's no. a completely different vibe from all three of these filmmakers i agree um, so it's, yeah, agree. it's it's a it's a futile exercise which is a very long-winded way of me saying i love robert eggers and i love the witch yeah. or the, I, the, the only thing i can do is i can maybe rank the films themselves i can probably do that but mm -hmm. when we're talking directors and styles i mean I don't even know how you begin to rank that, <laughs> at least for me. You know, no, and even no. though I prefer Eggers and Peel over Aster, again, I don't. What does that say about the styles, though? I guess just that I yeah. I may slightly prefer their styles, but like, I like I'm not saying that as a diss to Ari Aster. No, no. Like, it, it, you know, you know what I mean. Like, I'm not trying to undermine his approach to filmmaking because i i do like his approach to filmmaking i like his I, approach no it's just weird it's a weird I, I will say if i'm looking at it a bit more from a technical standpoint i do think ari aster is a very interesting filmmaker but of the three i think he trips over his ambitions more often than the other two i agree, I agree. um and that's does that we're make him more about execution and yeah. not approach yeah exactly yeah. uh so that might make him more interesting but i don't think that makes him maybe a, a more seamless filmmaker than the other two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but anyway, I, I love yeah. the Vivich or the witch. Yeah. It's the witch. I love the witch quite a bit. And mm. when I, when I was, what started that exercise was me thinking back on the witch, the lighthouse and the Northman thinking, is this his best one? Cause I love the Northman and I love the I lighthouse. Do. Yeah. Uh, all, all, you know, all three of these films, I think were top 10 of the year for me. The lighthouse may not have been at the time, but as I think about it, it should have been. Uh, and, and, okay. and and I love how all three of them are so stylistically different, but they're clearly from the mind of Robert Eggers. Like that is clearly, yeah. they are all clearly his films, mm. but I do think the witch is a very killer debut. Uh, so oh, it's yeah. great. W wonderful film. This is, this might be my favorite horror film that a 24 has distributed and produced. I think mm. it's really quite great. Yeah. I always have. Uh, and maybe this is where this conversation gets even more compelling because mm -hmm. I admittedly do have a little bit of a bias toward the witch because of my relationship with horror. Mm -hmm. And for those listening, watching that don't know, I'll quickly reiterate for the longest time, I did not have a relationship with horror because I historically was yeah and it was until you had cat. to it was until you were forced to because it's like oh i'm a critic i have to give these movies not a fair watch shake them. yeah i did not watch horror films all that much i mean part of it was yes being a scaredy cat also it felt mm. like at least of those that i did indulge in i felt like i was watching schlocky trite nonsense that fair, was just fair. utterly garbage like I just, I, I, I didn't feel like I was watching anything of value. Yeah, that's fair. And 
again, I'm not saying that to prop up the quote unquote elevated horror film. I'm not even mm-hmm. getting into that. And no, that, that the, does not exist. The, they don't that exist. Nonsense discourse. I'm not even touching it. <laughs> That's not at all what I'm saying. It's 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 just that it's a genre that didn't really register with me and the films that I did watch, I thought were some of the worst films I've ever seen. So <laughs> I just did not watch horror all that much. And then yeah, you yeah. start doing this show and it's it doesn't feel complete if you're not watching everything. And and by that I mean not every movie, but you know, all you know, you're touching all genres, all types of movies including yeah. horror. I remember even in 2013 prioritizing the conjuring. All right, here we go. Yeah. We're going to watch yeah, the conjuring. Those, those I'm going to force yeah. myself to do it. <laughs> you know, even though I was scared out of my gourd <laughs> walking into there, the theater. There you go. There you go. You know, so you know, you you watch it and then you're like, "Oh, I like the the conjuring actually." Mm-hmm. And then you're like, "Oh, I actually really liked it follows it turns out." And then you, you know, and then you the, the, got yeah. You, sorry to cut you off, but you got introduced to horror at the time when it was starting to kind of experience a rebirth. So yeah, and uh, maybe you, that's you, part of it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah you, you jumped on the train at the right time. Yeah, and so then you know, the witch comes out in 2015, and honestly, even though I didn't know much about Robert Eggers, I was intrigued by the marketing of it. Mm -hmm. And I loved that movie. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. To the point where it was one of my very favorite films of that year. It ended up in my top 10. So good. And I had never experienced that before. I had never loved a horror film so much that it prompted me to put it on a top year end list. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. at that point, my relationship with horror changed quite drastically. And obviously it's something that, I watch every year. We've we just talked about two horror films in, in the last few weeks, and while I didn't yeah. love one, I absolutely adored the other one. That was still yeah. one of my favorite conversations we've had all year, maybe the last couple of years, honestly. Um, you know, talking about those two movies. So yeah, you know, so it it's my relationship with the horror genre has had this interesting evolution. And much of it really, st- it, it, I guess technically it started with The Conjuring, but The Witch pivoted to a new space for me that I had never experienced before. So mm-hmm. I, I just, I do have a personal draw to that film that, yeah, you've, you know, yeah. maybe has that, a little that, bit of a that was, there. That was, that was kind of a, re- a reawakening for you. Like, yeah. like that was, yeah, that was your, that was your horrific birth. <laughs> yeah. My horrific birth. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, and that's a film that's still in my top 10 for that year. Oh, it's so it. good. So good. Yeah. So, all right. Well, those right. are my next two. All right. So Minari and the Witch is where you stand. Okay. Where do I want to go? Man, I got so excited talking about the witch. I <laughs> have to figure out what my next two films are going to be here. Um. Okay. I have three films I'm deciding from at the moment. Okay. Um. T- 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 okay. Um. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm gonna go with one that is. Oh man. See. Okay. Sorry. I know. I'm this, babbling on here. This is <laughs> I'm what trying makes to figure these, this out as we. This go. is what makes these drafts so much fun to do in real yeah. time when. <laughs> You find yourself in a lull and you don't know where to go next. So we've got yeah. these awkward silences. And I know. You try and fill I, I, the so space I'm filling, with some clever I'm filling the space with just yeah, jibber jabber. <laughs> just, just yeah. Nothing. So if this is if this is anything, this is our like cryptic way of getting <laughs> people to watch our YouTube channel as opposed to just listening listening yeah. via yeah, podcast. Watch us on YouTube. You're, you can you, yes, can, you're, you're, can see the wheels turning as I'm thinking and, and looking it's cer- through it's here. Certainly more fun than hearing us just go. Oh, yeah. And, oh, and, yeah. mm, and... <laughs> All right. I, okay. I, I think I have three here that I want to pick from. It's just, it's hard to choose because. I mean, but you only have two to pick from, so you can't pick all three. Yeah, exactly. I can only pick a few here. Yeah. All right. The, the first one, I'll save the other two. I'll debate that here in a minute. I, I have okay. the first one. Is I'm there, is with. there at least one that you're like, okay, I have to take that now. 
Yes, there's at okay. least one, but I'm trying to decide both of them in the moment. Oh, so, so, so we don't find ourselves in another lull <laughs> in like three minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think inevitably we're going to get there because, again, I'm still trying to decipher what that second film is going to be. But in the meantime, my next pick will be Sean Baker's The Florida Project. So how this is there <laughs> you uh so part of this is born out of yes seeing the responses on Twitter this afternoon however last weekend I tweeted about the Florida project and my mm -hmm. experience going to see the hotel in person before they yeah. painted it how dare they oh um, gosh that's sad. I know. It's very sad. I know. They got new owners. They just completely ruined it. It's, it's mm -hmm. awful. It's tragic. Mm -hmm. uh, at any rate, I tweeted that out, and I got a fair amount of response to that, going, oh, my gosh, that's cool. Uh, what a great movie. So, yeah, there's a lot of fans out there for the Florida Project. Even if it's not in your top five, I'd say for a lot of people, it's in their top 10, top 15 at worst. So I do think there's going to be a lot of people that – that love this film, that well, would vote for this film. And it, man, it is so good. This this is such a great movie. That let me features Yeah. Let me say this. This okay. might be my favorite A twenty four film. I this think is this your is my number one. This might be my number one. Okay. Yeah, because you talked about uncut gems earlier, but this is your number one. Your I true think this number is, one. I think this is my true number one. Okay. Yeah, this is yeah. in my, certainly in my top 10, for okay. sure, I would think. I don't know. I love this movie, though. I do want to go yeah. back and double check something, because I know when yeah, we did our best. Yeah, I have it in my top 10. Because I know, I, I want to see if I can find this list I had on Letterboxd, because I know when we did our best of the decade episode some years ago, I definitely mm. had this in my top 10, and it may have been the only a24 film in my top 10 in or at the very 10? least yeah or at the very least the highest rated a24 film in my top mm. 10 so i might try and find this as we're uh as okay. we're talking here so if you have more to say about it go ahead i'm just gonna keep browsing yeah. through my letterbox list right now well i think what's funny about that is that it comes out the same year as ladybird which i mentioned earlier is my number one Mm -hmm. So the Florida project is right behind Lady Bird for me because that is my favorite film of 2017. My favorite A24 film, as I mentioned earlier, my number two of 2017 is get out, which isn't a 24, but kind of feels like a 24 <laughs> in some ways. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not. And then at number three, I have the Florida project. So it's, it's right there. Like it's very much in that conversation for the top of 2017 for me. So it's very much in that same mix here. Yeah. Uh, I love it. It's in my top 10, um, for, for a 24, uh, yeah. Awesome movie. Two performances it's, that you just, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, that just when, when I, when I, when I published this, uh, Top 10 best of the decade, 2010 through 2019. Eight, uh, the Florida Project was the only A24 film I had in my top 10. Okay, there you go. So, And, and I can say right now, 2020 onward, an A24 distributed film hasn't surpassed it yet for me. So, yeah. okay. All right. So, okay. It's, at, at, at this point, it's my number one A24 film. And there it is not on my list. <laughs> and it's not on your list here. Yeah, which is really funny. However... Yeah. I think the irony of that, now I'm not looking at my best of the decade list. I don't have that pulled up in front of me, but I I, I can tell you that on that list for me was Lady Bird, and Lady Bird you there, have yeah. that on your list. Yeah, so, so. yeah, yeah it's, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, right? <laughs> so, so there you go. Uh, but yeah, no, this is a great film, Brooklyn, Prince, Bria Venete, and I haven't seen Bria Venete in anything since then. I don't even know if she's... Yeah, Still I want acting. to look that up. I want to look that up and find out what's going on. If she's, Honestly, I have Maybe no she's idea. found another outlet that she's preferred to latch on to. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Uh, but but it is kind of crazy because, you know, she obviously didn't win any major awards. I think she was nominated for, like, some, uh, you know, like regional critics groups, you know, things like yeah. that. 
Yeah. And I'm sure we talked about her at the Incession Film Awards that year. I would imagine. We did. So we definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. An incredible performance. It's so great. And it's, you know, I don't know how the industry totally works. I don't know mm-hmm. why she hasn't been scooped up or been in anything since. I think she's mm-hmm. done a, a couple of small things, but she really hasn't mm-hmm. done, you know, anything of meaning. And this was 2017. So that was what, seven, eight years yeah. ago now. So well, at least we're seeing Brooklyn Prince grow up into we're a great actress. Brooklyn yeah, Prince we're seeing things. her. And that's, she, she, yeah, she's you're right. growing up, making her way through cocaine bears and, <laughs> and Lego movie twos. So. Exactly. <laughs> she's in some things. She's still in some things for sure. Yeah. Uh, regardless of that, though. You know, two phenomenal performances. Willem Dafoe is really great. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just one of the best directed and written films. That ending is phenomenal as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Man, I Mm -hmm. just, I love that film so much. So I I had to go with it here. So uh, anyway, long story short, The Florida Project is my next pick. So I'll say again, I'll say again, how dare you? Yeah, you're welcome. (laughs) 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 All right. From there, where do I go? All right, so yeah. I'm going to go with a pick that might be... I, I, I do kind of wonder how much this will help or hurt. It's one of the best films that A24 has in their umbrella. Mm-hmm. I will admit, and I might have missed it. It's very possible I might have missed it. I don't think I saw this one as much. Now, I only asked for your top five, so that was the responses I got. What's right. interesting is, what if I asked you for your top ten? And so With, then everyone yeah, had yeah. to reveal their six through ten. Does this film then make a lot more list? I do wonder that. Mm-hmm. Because I, I admittedly didn't see it quite as much, but I'm going to come in here with a little conviction and some passion for it. It's one of the best movies they have. It is under the skin. Oh, I'm going to go a little under the skin. Interesting. And, and again, I don't know how much this or hurts hurts me in terms of the voting, but I will absolutely die right. on the hill that this, you're, you're going to get, to you might get list. some people that it's like, Oh yeah, you got under the skin. Absolutely. And then you'll get other people. It's like, Oh, anything, but the under, under the, the skin. skin. <laughs> it's very possible. <laughs> That it's going to be a little polarizing, which is why it's, you know, it's a little later in the process here. So, sure, you know, I feel like taking a little bit of a risk. Uh, but, you know, the Scarlett Johansson of it all, the, the uniqueness of it, there are there just aren't many films like it. Jonathan Glazer is a unique voice. Mm-hmm. And this is one mm-hmm. of the most unique among unique voices in the A24 canon. So an effective horror film that is as good as any conventional horror film that you've seen from A24. So Sure, sure. I'm going under the skin. That's really good film. Here. Frightening film. It's, I mean, it is a horror film, but it's not really like, it doesn't really fall into the same, I guess, tonal landscape as some of these other quote-unquote A24 horror films are. But yep. at the same time, it's it might be their most frightening film which is a weird thing to say. At least it has a few sequences yeah. that are among some of the scariest things I could remember seeing in a movie. So I, yeah. I you have to give the movie some credit there and might be my favorite Jonathan Glazer film, honestly. So yeah, yeah, totally. really great stuff. All right. So I've got two picks next and I honestly, I have no idea where to go next. Um, I try, as you were talking throughout some of that, I was trying to prioritize some of the other films that we have outstanding. Uh, trying to balance out between, okay, these are films I love, but which ones are going to help me the most? Yeah. And honestly, I don't really know (laughs) at this point. Uh, And I feel like you're in a similar camp. You've got three more films to pick to round out your 10. Mm -hmm. I've got four here. And I have at least like 10 films remaining where it's like, I feel like I can go with any one of these. Yeah. (sighs) All right. Yeah. So for those listening, on either Spotify, and, uh, Apple, and, and, and whatever podcast platform you primarily use, we apologize for the dead space that might happen now. <laughs> we really I know. do. We're, I know there's, because you're thinking here on the fly, there's obviously a ton of films to choose from here. And some great movies, some great movies will be left off the list. Yeah. So where do you go? Especially because 
and, you know, as we mentioned earlier, it's not like we're just picking our favorites here. That would have been a much easier task. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, mm. you're, you're trying to think through how everyone will vote. What helps my list in a vote? You know? Room. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You see, and the, well, I think what's interesting about Room is if we did this five years ago, I'd be like, oh my gosh, that's mm. going to really help out. Like, I just feel like with all the A24 films that have come out, I I, I want to say that one's gotten lost a little bit, but I think it's I know, still great. I think it's I know still some one people, of the best on the list. I know some people who still hold it in pretty high regard. Yeah. Um, so... I guess I'm, I, I, I think guess it's I'm a going with pick. the Brie. Don't I guess I'm wrong. going with the Brie Larson of it all. Uh, maybe that's maybe what I think is going to help me in the long run from a voting standpoint. Okay. But a, a hunch was telling me, don't lose room. Uh, okay. like, not not to say that it's going to save or even break my list, but it's a at this point it's one of the safer picks. Um, so that's pick. that's, yeah. that's why I'm going with that here. Um, okay. So I'll go with that, and okay. then as far as my next one here. Again, I'm I'm going by hunch at this point. What movies do I think remaining might really help me? And, and as you can kind of see, I'm I, there. There are, there are a few obvious films, JD, that we haven't even yeah. mentioned yet. And I think we're thinking the same thing that some of these obvious films are very popular, very well regarded, and very well known, but they also have their detractors. Yeah, uh, which is why I'm kind of going with a few more yeah, it, obscure totally films. Fair. I that's guess that's a totally <laughs> fair way to look at it. Yeah, which is why I went with Room, and for my next pick, it's why I'm going to go with The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Okay, yeah, that's a great movie. I know yeah. the Jonathan Majors of it all now, but that's a film that that might hurt me now that I think about it. But that movie is so good. It's so good though. It's a great yeah. movie. I hate that he's at the center of it, but I know it is like, a great performance though. I, you know, great performance though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, room so. and last black man in San Francisco. Yeah. We'll see what that does for me, but I, I yeah, I'm trying okay. to get a little obscure here. This, I, I think I'm at a point now where I'm, I'm looking at your list and what you have, and I think I have a losing battle here. So uh, I, 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 and, and <laughs> I, I really, I really do. So now I'm just having a little bit of fun here. I think right. weirdly, Going first and getting Moonlight out of the way was probably the only way you can ever win a draft like this. I yeah. really think that may have been the case. Hey, no, that's okay. You know, you yeah. gotta do do with what you got. Okay, so my next two here, I, my next pick is is a little recent, but a beloved one. I'm going with After Sun. That was one I was thinking about as well. Yeah, so that's that's going to be the one I'm going with now, and and that's a okay. little bit of what you're talking about there in terms yeah. of, I, I mean, I still think this film is great. Personally, I have it at number three. I'm that. High. Yeah. I know you have this one really high personally. I, this is really high for me. Understandably, it might not be that high for everybody, but most people seem to still really love this film. It doesn't have the major detractors like some of these others that might be a little bit more polarizing, such as under the skin, under the skin mm. is certainly going to be more polarizing than yeah. after sun. Uh, but after sun, new to the list but still yeah. really great i still think it's high end top tier a24 that everyone mm. loved from uh, not last year but the year previously right all right so my next pick from there so i have two more to go right so one more in yeah. this round and then i one I more in this round but one. two more in totality okay again there's a little bit of tug of war here between my head and heart yeah, because same here. I, I have two heart picks here, mm -hmm. and they're the I easy could, ones, right? Like, I, like, like yeah. picking from your heart is easy, but yeah. that, but sometimes that's what kills you, right? Yes, <laughs> it does. All right, so I'm gonna go. The next pick is a little bit. Of, it's a heart pick, but also I did see on some list uh, to earlier today, so I know there's at least some people that will agree with me. I'm going to do it though. We're at the end here. Screw it. I'm going with spring breakers. Yeah. I was, I, I was really hoping to pick that one actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with spring breakers, man. I, we talked about it earlier. This is the, the third 
second or third film they ever released. And I still think it is one of their very best. Yeah. Like on my personal list, I have it at number five. I, I still think it like, that's crazy. Like Moonlight, it's, the first yeah. one they ever produced wins best picture. Spring Breakers, yeah. the second yeah. they ever released top five. I, I don't know what it is about A24 in that regard, but it is kind of funny to me. It's it's certainly a top 10 A24 film for me. Yeah, I, yeah, I love and it. Again, another one of the better films of the past decade. Yeah. I agree. And similarly to Last Black Man in San Francisco, you have to wrestle with the James Franco of it all, I know. And I, I, I totally empathize with those that are not able to separate the man from the performance. Yeah. Especially in that film of all the movies <laughs> like Franco. In yeah, that that's fair. I totally get it. Totally get it. But I love that film and that performance is it, like in terms of just what's on the screen, separating the man himself. It is a memorable and unforgettable performance for sure for better or worse, I guess. But well, I do really love that film. It's it's also a film that made me feel made me fear for my life hearing a Britney Spears song. Exactly. I mean, like, I, 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 many I no, no I, yeah, I don't know who can do that. The only person that can do that is apparently Harmony Corinne. So, exactly. Yeah, well done there. I I, well I weirdly have a soft spot for Harmony Corinne. Although when I say I that, too. I really only say that for Spring Breakers and the Beach Bum, which is really the extent of my knowledge of him. But I say that because the Beach Bum, I think, is a very underrated. I quite love that one. So, I do, I do yeah, as I well. Think it's really good. Yeah, yeah. All right, and, but the so, Beach Bum was an A twenty four, was it? It was not. No, no uh, but no. it was a Harmony Corinne film. I'm just talking about yeah. Harmony Corinne. In yeah, general. sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm with you. I yeah. I am pro Beach Bum. I'm definitely there with you. I would uh, die on that hill. All right, all right, all right. Let's uh, <laughs> round out my ten here. I've only got two more picks, and I've got a, I've got to pick a doozy. I really do. Are there, this is, this is where it gets weird because I'm looking through the rest of what I have on this list here. And it's like, are there any, are there any hidden doozies that we just forgot about? And I, I think so. I mean, I, there's well, at least, I, I, I as I said, here for sure. I, as I said earlier, there are at least two major doozies that we haven't picked yet. And I'm not going to pick them because I think they have their fair share of detractors as well. Okay. Like that's, that's what worries me about them, which is why I'm kind of getting a little weird here, which might help me. It'll most likely hurt me, but that's been my strategy. I might as well You're stick go with laggies. it. Oh, I'm not good going laggies. laggies. Not a bad <laughs> movie, but I'm not going <laughs> laggies. I'm, even, I'm I'm lagging here trying to pick my last two, but I'm not going with laggies. That's not my that's not my safety pick. Um, I think I'm gonna do. Oof. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, climax. It's the climax of the conversation. Holding that giant O is more interesting than the movie climax. Um. <laughs> Yeah. All right. First What'd cow. Oh man. Okay. That's a good pick. I First love that. Cow. First cow. What a movie. What, what a movie. movie. So good. Okay. And sometimes like it. all it takes is a female director to make one of the best movies about male friendship of the past 10 years. Incredible. So good. Love that irony. Yeah. So good. Okay. Yeah. I feel pretty good about that one. That's a good one. I love that pick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was probably going to be my last one if you didn't take it. So. Okay. Well, at least I snagged something that you were thinking of. So now we're at least a little bit even there. Um, da, 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 Last pick. Last pick. Last mm -hmm. pick. What do I go with? What can't do screw I it up. Do? Can't, can't screw, screw it up. up. I mean, there's so many films remaining. You can't really screw it up, but you also can really screw it up. Yeah. Um, Civil War. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you know, what are you thinking? I, what are you I thinking? think I think I am gonna play the popular game here. Okay. I'm gonna go everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's uh, a good one. It is, but okay. So I'm curious where you're gonna go with your number ten, 
I won't say anything yet until you say it, but there are, there were two films in particular that I know are among the more the more popular A24 films. But I think they also have their fair share of detractors. And one of them was Everything Everywhere All at Once, given the whole, you know, winning best picture of it all, which yeah, is a it's, thing it's that It's like the La La Land it, thing, right? <laughs> yeah, which is, you know, ironic yeah. that Moonlight doesn't carry that reputation because it's, you know, genuinely an, an amazing movie. And I do really like everything everywhere all at once. I, I, but I do think it has fallen into that trap that you sometimes talk about, right, JD? Mm -hmm. Of a movie that wins Best Picture and then it's okay to start hating it. I don't think anyone would care. I think it would, like the reputation it had over the summer when people were surprised by it or raving mm -hmm. about it. This is a great movie by the Daniels. What a huge surprise. It's this massive hit for A24. Mm -hmm. If that's all it ever ended up being, I think it would have. Oh, I would have. I would have picked this in my top best, two yeah, or something. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I think everyone in the right mind would. Yeah. But then there's the awards of it all, which is a rabbit hole we don't need to go on down here. But you yeah. all know, longtime listeners will certainly know how I feel about that. Yep. And, yep. and look again, I'm not anti awards, but award season tends to unravel a reputation it does it, do, it, it really does it really does yeah, and I that mean, was my hesitation with picking it even at all yeah. i was almost and it's not, not even, even going it, to. It, and it's not even just films i mean anne hathaway essentially had to leave hollywood for five years because her name mm -hmm. was completely being dragged through the concrete yeah. jennifer lawrence essentially walked away yeah for quite a few years for the same thing like award yeah. season just tends to bring out the worst in terms of film discourse, I think. Because mm -hmm. again, we turn it into, into sports. A sport. Okay, there it is. Soapbox <laughs> time. Take a shot, everybody. <laughs> Take a shot. But... We need we need a buzzer for this show. <laughs> Whenever you get into it, we need to play a buzzer. I'm not I'm not kidding. Put that onto your pad. <laughs> <laughs> I should, yeah. Uh, but you know, that's the only reason. Genuinely, that's the only reason. It is. It really is. That people talk about everything, everywhere, all at once in that way. I still maintain it's one of the best films of that year. I love it. Did it need mm -hmm. to win Best Picture? Maybe not. I can concede it wasn't my number one either. I think I had it at number no. three or four in my list. Honestly, like, it, it, didn't even, it didn't make my top 10 that year. It was in my top 20, but I still really like the movie. I love it. I think it deserved an Oscar nomination for Best Picture. Fair. And... I don't think anyone would have cared for that. Like, mm -hmm. like, like people would have been okay with that is what I'm trying to say. If right. it got the best picture nomination and all of those other nominations, because it's not even just the, the best picture. It's, you know, the whole supporting actress conversation as well. Yeah. Yeah. It just won a lot of awards and I can understand why people feel that it shouldn't have won some of them. Maybe mm -hmm. even including Best Picture. But that's what it comes down to. It's like, oh, yeah. it won all these awards. That's the response. Well, it's not, it's like, oh, can I you, didn't can like you... this part of the movie, or this didn't work for me. Or let's have a genuine yeah. conversation oh. about why it works or what doesn't work about the film. That is never, yeah. ever, so, ever, ever the conversation. It's, oh, my God, all these awards. Can you blame me for waiting to pick it this long then, right? Like, no, like, like, it like just if, drives if I didn't pick me it, crazy. If, if I didn't pick it at all, you would understand why. Like, that's yeah. just, it's the narrative around it now. Yeah. And look, I'm not anti Oscars. I'm anti the way it is treated sometimes. Like, like these films themselves. Like yeah. I just, the, the intent of art should not be about that ever. I'm with you. I'm with you. And it saddens me, like genuinely saddens me that these conversations happen. And that's what it turns yeah. into. Yeah. Like I Oof. like I don't care if you don't like the film. If you don't like the film, let's talk about it. Let's have a genuine, honest conversation. Yeah. Why you don't but like if, it? But if you don't that's like it okay. because it won Best Picture, then we have a problem here. But and that's what a lot of the, the reputation part of it. That's what this boils down yeah. to. Anyway, it's still yeah, a good so, movie. Anyway, it's a popular movie from A twenty four. Didn't did want to go down the rabbit hole, and we did it anyway. Yeah, so, well, you know, we, did. we always find a way. We always find a way. There's always a path there. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So that's a good pick. I do like that. All right, so Brennan's list is done. I know we're going a little long here, so I'll try to be yeah. as brief as I can. Uh, all right, so for my last pick, I have, let's see, there's one, two, 
three films I'm trying to go back and forth between. Oh, man, live. I know, right? Man, live, man, live. Where do I go? Um, Do I go with the personal pick? Because there's a personal pick here for me. Uh, um, I I mean, I can't tell you what to do. I you know want what? you to pick. I want you to pick a film that sucks. That's what I want you to pick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna. Go, I'm not gonna go with my heart as much as I do want to go with my heart. Oh, you're going with your head. Okay, you're yeah, you're going the I'll logical so. route. Which I mean, I don't. In some ways, I kind of wish that I did tally. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? The, yeah. All the Twitter. <laughs> I wish that I did. Um, I kind of half expected you to because you got a lot of responses. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. One thing I noticed what was happening on Twitter was it wasn't just people quote tweeting your prompt. People then started quote tweeting those quote tweets. So it actually yes. started to carry it, some legs. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I did see that. I saw some of the quote tweets of the quote tweets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, people have their thoughts on A24, which is very exciting. Awesome. Um, and it's funny because I'm looking through some of them now trying to decipher and, and I, I'm still seeing a lot of uh, Green Knight mentions. <laughs> like people are still tweeting about that. Uh, so, all right. I got to make amazing. a decision here. Got to make you a do. decision. So do. we're, we're running out of time. The bomb's, about to go. the bomb's about to go off. Know, it's about to go off. Um, okay. I have made a decision, I think. Okay. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. Oh, see, I lied. I totally lied because now, as soon as I was about to say it, I backtracked. I backtracked. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. You know, I I doubled up earlier once. I'll do it again. The zone of interest. Did not expect you to go that route. I okay. was. Oh, well, I, I I told you I was going back and forth. So, so I'm, the, the, I'm genuinely curious. Okay, well, first talk about the zone of interest, and I'm genuinely curious what that other film you were going back and forth with. Okay, so the zone of interest I have in my personal top 10 for context. I think right. it's great. I know it's relatively new. I had Jonathan Glazer on my list earlier, and, you know, perhaps with him winning an Oscar recently, I know... Some of his yeah, comments there's, were there's controversial. Some, some com yeah, yeah, it's fair. But I will say, for those that love the film and love Jonathan Glazer, there's a certain amount of people that were only endeared further to Jonathan Glazer and that film as a result. True. And yeah. I'm kind of reliant on that a, a little bit here. I'm, I, and also just kind of hoping that people, you know, love the film, you know, kind of yeah. like I do. Yeah. So. yeah. And, and I know there's a lot of people that do. So I'm going to go zone of interest. That's right. the head pick. That's the, this is genuinely one of the best movies on here as well. Kind of thing. Okay. Okay. The heart pick for me, it was Ivan Locke. I really wanted to pick Locke as, figured, as my last line so, here. So yeah, when you kept talking about going with your head versus your heart, I was kind of thinking the heart was going to be something like a lock. Uh, mm -hmm. cause I, I know how much you like that movie and I think it's a pretty effective film as well. Mm -hmm. The other film I thought you were toying with, and I'm, I'm curious to see what you think of this because I mentioned there are two films in particular that are very popular in the a 24 canon. Uh, one of them being everything everywhere all at once. The other one that I didn't pick because I think it might have some detractors and I thought you might be going with it this way. Hereditary. was hereditary, hereditary. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I, I was thinking about Hereditary. The people that love that film love that film. That's Absolutely the thing. Adore like, it. Could you have gotten some type of like Robert Pattinson Stan Hive to de to defend Perhaps. your list with a pick? Like, like that. That's why I was almost toying yeah. with it. Like, like the, the two films I was yeah. really toying with were Hereditary and Good Time because I thought yeah. maybe I would get the Hive for just that yeah. pick. But I, yeah. I, I was I was too afraid to go that route. I mean, I, I think with good time, I, the more the more time, the more good time yeah. that goes more on. More good time. 
I feel like I'm in a minority on that. Like people love that movie. I, I just don't sadly love it as much as everyone else does. I, I like it. I, I think it has, <laughs> this is, this is a really dumb thing to judge about the movie, but I think it has probably one of the worst scenes of an A24 film ever. I agree. Where, where it's the exposition dump from the guy in the backseat who says, yeah. I can't remember anything, but here's all the information you need yeah. anyway. It's yeah. <laughs> weird. Super weird. I know. <laughs> like this does not work for me at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree. No, I mean, there's a lot to love about the film. I don't hate it. Like I, I mm -mm, like it on mm -mm. the whole, but I just don't yeah. love it as much as everyone else. Yeah. So yeah, it's not near the top for me as a result. I have some mixed feelings about Hereditary as well. But again, like Same. the highs Same. of Hereditary really are great. Really are I, great. I, I agree. Yeah, it's just I don't think it's a, a the finalized version of that film. I just don't think it's fully effective. I yeah. I admittedly have not seen Bo is Afraid yet, so I I, I, I yeah. can't speak to that. Love but Bo. I do think I do think Midsommar is a better film than Hereditary. Yeah. Or midsummer. I, I I I always say midsummer, but I guess it really is pronounced midsummer. Um, so yeah, midsummer. Uh, yeah, but but that but that They've film, really you know, midsummer. That. I do yeah. think is better <laughs> than Hereditary. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a more consistent film for sure. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, Hereditary probably has higher highs for me, but Midsummer is a much more consistent film, and it's still. Yeah. Pretty great. I, I really like it a lot too. So yeah, absolutely. And I liked Bo. Bo takes some huge swings. They don't all land, but I love the swings. It's, I'm excited to see it. Really I, 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 yeah, I I'm excited to watch it. I, yeah, it's it's one I yeah. just you know, it, it, Ari Aster is one of those filmmakers that regardless of whether you like his films or not, you have to experience it all the way through. And I need yeah. to make time for a three hour experience. Yeah, it's certainly worth it. I, I think okay. so anyway. I Good think, to know. I think Good it's to know. worth it. Um, all right, so those are our picks. I know we're running long here, so let's quickly run down our selections here. This is what you, the people, are voting on. We will mm -hmm. put out a post on Twitter later this week, a poll yeah. Yeah. for you to vote on as to whose list you like better. So, Brennan, your A24 ranking. It is Uncut Gems, Lady Bird, The Farewell, Ex Machina, Minari, The Witch, Room, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, First Cow, and Everything Everywhere All at Once. And let me be clear, because I, ranking was the wrong term. This is not a ranking. It's just I was a just draft. about to say, it's just a just draft. draft. It, this just, is not an order of it's preference the list or in totality. Like yeah. yeah, just the, the list in totality. So that is Brennan's team, his list, if you will. Mine is Moonlight, The Green Knights, Past Lives, First Reformed, A Ghost Story, the Florida Project, Under the Skin, After Sun, Spring Breakers, and The Zone of Interest. Mm -hmm. right I like it. Lots of good we'll see. movies from these guys. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. These guys, these guys, these guys make movies. They they have some great movies in their mm -hmm. canon. There's no doubt about that. So yeah, they do. All right, I think with that we'll go ahead and wind down here since again we're, we've gone kind of yeah. long here. So yeah, it's been, it's that been is extensive. our draft. Our A24 draft, again, be on the lookout for that tweet later on in the week. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. need your vote, so be ready for that. Of course, if you agree or disagree with anything we had to say, you can always hit us up on social media. You can email us in sessionfilm at gmail.com. Let us know mm -hmm. if you're watching here on YouTube. You can leave a comment below. Uh, let, let us know what you think as well. Yeah. Um, so really do appreciate that. Um, I want to plug reviews. This week we will have a review for Civil War. Mm -hmm. Little Axe Garland and yeah. Wicked Little Letters, I think, is what we're doing as well. I think either, yeah, it was either that or The Greatest Hits, the new film from uh, Ned Benson, Benson uh, which is available right. on Hulu right now. So, But I think it's most likely going to be Wicked Little Letters. I do want to see the Ned Benson film, though. I've been waiting yeah. for another film from him for a decade. Well, it's on oh. Hulu now, and I don't know if you knew that. No, I, I yeah, I'm going to make time for that. Okay. It was a busy weekend, but I'm going to make time for that yeah. as well. Uh, so, uh, so we'll, yeah, we'll have reviews for those coming down the pipeline here soon as well. I just do want to reiterate, we do have reviews for Monkey Man. And mm -hmm. earlier I mentioned First Omen. We, the, we talked about the First Omen this last week, and it was a really fun conversation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we talked about Immaculate in that as well. It's hard to not compare the two. 
Uh, it was really great. So please go and check those reviews out. There's a new Women in Session that will be out. By the time this goes out, the new Women in Session will be available where the ladies debate Charlton Heston, which was really mm. fun. So you can go and check yeah, that yeah. out. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll have a, a new bonus content episode, Brendan and I. So if mm -hmm. you want to hear that for our VIP members, you can either subscribe on Patreon, uh, YouTube memberships, or Apple Podcast subscriptions. Uh, you can find links to all of that at InSessionFilm.com. Mm -hmm. uh, it's real easy uh, on, on Apple Podcast. You can even get a free trial. Um, and it's just a, a small fee, one low monthly fee. Same thing with YouTube memberships. If you go to our YouTube page, you'll see a join button there. Uh, just mm -hmm. click that and you can join and you'll get all of our YouTube membership VIP episodes there for a low fee. Mm -hmm. um, and this week, Brendan and I talk about dawn of the planet of the apes really we talked about the whole apes trilogy and then we talked about there's, west there's ball and yeah. a little bit of kingdom of the planet of the apes and our anticipation there, there, there was a lot yeah. of ape talk a lot of, a lot, monkey a lot talk. of ape talk yeah. Yeah. and there's a reason for it it's not totally random it's a little random no, but not totally no um, in your case gd it's not random it's there there's a story there for sure yeah there's a story there so you can go and check that out it was, it was a yeah. really fun conversation though yeah yeah it was uh, so go and check that out um, and also, we have a, a Chasing the Gold episode. Uh, Shadon Larkey is doing a really interesting thing where she's bringing on mm -hmm. writers from, from yeah. the website who are going to be writing Chasing the Gold pieces this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so she's going to start bringing them on the podcast to to kind of go through the categories they're going to be writing about. Um, nice. And the first one is up right now where she talks with Cameron Ritter about the best director category. Yeah, which uh, was really fun. So you can go and, and check out that episode. It is live right now. So uh, please go and check that out. How about that? Okay. I think with that, we can go ahead and finish up here again. Mm -hmm. um, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube. Like the video. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Um, rate and review us on those platforms as well. It really helps out the show. Yeah. Uh, again, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd. You can email us in sessionfilm at gmail.com. Brendan, anything else before we get out of here? Did I miss I'm, anything? Uh, I think you covered it. I'll just say that you know an A24 draft list is really difficult when the person who should be running for president, Marcel the Shell with shoes on, doesn't make anyone's list. <laughs> <laughs> I love Marcel. What a fun I movie love that Marcel. was. Marcel should be running for president. Yeah, that was really fantastic. I, I mean, there were we didn't have time to go into a lot of them, but I just wanted to throw that one out there. But that, that was one so, I almost took. So many, like eighth grade, I saw quite a few times on there as well. The lobster. Uh, the lobster is one that I would have. I saw actually quite a few after Yang uh, tweets, and I was like, I, oh my gosh, after I, Yang, I'm I'm not yeah, alone. I, I saw quite a few for the Iron Claw. The Iron Claw was another one. That that was one of those like quote unquote popular ones. I almost yeah. considered as well. Yeah, yeah, same, same. But I thought, yeah. is it too new? I, I, yeah. I was I was worried about that. Yeah, I saw a few for a most violent year. I I almost threw that one on there. That's as a well. surprising one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, they they have some good movies. Mm -hmm. You know, bottom mm -hmm. line, they have some good movies. They do. Um, all right. At any rate, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for our conversation on Civil War later on this week. And we'll see you all next time on the In Session Film Podcast. Lady Bird. Lady Bird. I'm going to say it. Elevated horror. <laughs> <laughs>